Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. It's the Labor Day sale at Ace. Now through Monday only, buy two gallons of our top paint brands, Valspar, Clark & Kensington, and Royal, and get the third gallon free. And with the Ace Extra Mile promise, if it ever takes more than one trip to complete your paint project, we'll bring you what you need and deliveries free. Don't miss the buy two, get one free paint sale only at Ace. Limit two free gallons of equal or lesser value. Prices may vary. Delivery subject to availability. Visit acehardware.com for more details. Do you enjoy a crisp, refreshing soft drink, but hate choosing between the empty calories and the artificial sweeteners? Well, now you don't have to, thanks to Zevia. With Zevia, you don't have to worry about any potential harmful side effects since they have no caramel coloring and use the natural plant-based sweetener, Stevia. Zevia offers 14 different flavors of soda, four flavors of sparkling wine, and four different energy drinks. That gives you a ton of safer and delicious options for you to enjoy. It's the safest soft drink on the market, made with ingredients you'd find in your own kitchen. There's nothing artificial in any of their products, and there isn't any calories either. It's a miracle. Now, Zevia is giving our fans a chance to try it yourselves for free. If you live in the U.S. or Canada, just head over to Zevia.com backslash podcast and sign up. They'll mail you a coupon to try a free six-pack just like that. Go to zevia.com slash podcast now and get your free Zevia. Enjoy the show. The following advertisement has been paid for by the big guy Ryback. Are you hungry? You know I'm so hungry, big guy. Hey, Mark. What brings you here? So I'm just here to hang out with my all-time favorite superstar of all time. What brings you here? Well, I'm doing a paid advertisement for Feed Me More Nutrition, available at feedmemore.com. Big guy, that is music to my ears. Do you tell the people about your ice-so-hungry grass-fed whey protein isolate, the best-tasting protein on the market, wake up unlimited energy, the strongest pre-workout on the market, and the big guy, all-natural testosterone booster, my personal fave. Big guy, you're on to something with this Feed Me More Nutrition. It is some top-quality stuff. Well, thank you, Mark, it is. Feed Me More Nutrition, premium quality, the highest quality supplements on the market today. Available now at feedmemore.com. But wait, there's more. Just for being a listener of Conversation with the Big Guy, you can now save 10%. That's right, save 10% at feedmemore.com on all Feed Me More merchandise and apparel and Feed Me More Nutrition with discount code PODCAST10, P-O-D-C-A-S-T-10. One zero podcast ten. Thank you, guys. Pet slap my ass. It's time for conversation with the big guy, pal. <laughs> Welcome to Conversation with the Big Guy. I am the Big Guy Ryback, and I'm sitting here with the one, Pat Buck. Happy to be here. I'm happy I'm drinking vodka this week. No more tequila. Let's Thank kick this God. show off. I know. Dude, it was hurting the next day. I, uh, vodka and Zevia just goes right through me, and I feel great the next day, but the tequila made me sleep a couple extra hours. But I'm back. Uh, we're drinking again. Conversation with the Big Guy. I have a lot of energy this week. Uh, how was your week to start? We're going to do a little bit different format and uh, flip it up for you for you faithful listeners that have been tuning in week after week. So uh, let's just start with a little small talk. How you been this week, man? Uh, it's been a good week. I know we usually do the plugs up front, but sometimes we have a couple of the ads up front. And if an uh, old audio boom throws one in there and sneaks one in on us, then mm-hmm. uh, it, it could be a little uh, heavy up front. I think we're also going to put a little music into our plugs coming up here. With a, a little song of the week every week, just to kind of spice it up for our listeners. So it's just yeah. more than just us putting ourselves over and what we got going on. But it was a great week. Uh, I had my, uh, well, actually, I, I shouldn't say it, it's, I had my stem cell procedure done uh, a couple days ago, and uh, that went great. And I actually, my shoulder, it was really tight for a couple days. And uh, it, that that's just normal with them. They they did everything, and they all the stem cells, the bone marrow stem cells, went inside my shoulder joint. So it was my shoulder was like really really tight for two days, and I wasn't allowed. They said no lifting, nothing for two days. You just got to let everything calm down. And mm-hmm. uh, I was able to finally do a workout today, uh, a, a nice one at home. 
but I, I had to stay at home to work out because um, they also gave me an extra little gift with the surgery uh, this week. I, oh, I really? woke up. Yeah, I I woke up and uh, I could not open up my eyes. Oh boy! And, uh, I can like, see a little bit. Uh, I don't know if you're going yeah. for a, a pirate character on the old podcast. <laughs> Hardy har har. <laughs> uh, no, no, I couldn't open neither of my eyes, and like they were super sensitive to the light in the in the in the hospital room, and 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 I go, what'd you guys do to my eyes? And like I thought, like my left eye was really bad. It felt like somebody like cut my eye okay. off like the corner. And um, they go, well, we didn't do anything to your eyes. So I like, and Priscilla was there with me and took me back home, um, in which it's always, I'm notorious for any time after a surgery, I go get buffalo fingers. Um, We went to PDQ, which is a place in Vegas. They got um, these amazing buffalo fingers and uh, got a big order of those and a milkshake because you don't eat all. I didn't eat for probably like 11 hours. Sure, so you got to treat like, yourself. Got to treat my, yourself. That's my treat for like the going through the procedure, and uh, then right back on the diet. But um, gave it the day. I had to keep my eyes shut the whole day and just sat on the couch because I couldn't. My right, I'm right eye dominant. My left eye, and my right eye ended up being all right, even though it was a little bloodshot. My left eye, I couldn't keep open. If I tried to open it, it just started watering, and uh, it, it was just like a real pain in the ass. So uh, I laid on the couch most of the day, keeping my eyes shut. And uh, got to bed early, and I woke up the next day, and it was super swollen. And I've had pink eye twice before now throughout my career. I remember that. And, yeah, which Daniel Bryan, by the way, is adamant on. It's because I shit and don't wash my hands. That's and, that's immediately what I thought when you told me you had pink eye again. I thought of Dan yeah, telling that story. He, he loves to go around and tell that story. But I, <laughs> the two times I've gotten pink eye, I believe have been in my left eye. Um if I'm not mistaken. And, um, it's it, again in my, it was in my left eye. And so I had to go to the quick care. Um, when I, as soon as I woke up, I, I just showered and, and shaved my head, always shave the head before I go out and, uh, went to the quick care. And, uh, the doctor told me he, I, my nose was really stuffed up too and, and, and runny and I didn't know what was going on. It felt like I had like a, an upper respiratory almost infection coming on along with the eye. And he goes, did they put the two little nostril things in your nose for the oxygen? Okay. I said, I said, yeah. He goes, most likely there was something had to have been on it or through that where it gave me some sort of infection and it went right into my eyes. Oh. My left, my left eye got the, the brunt of it. And so they had to put me on the eye drops and uh, antibiotics. So um, I've had to stay quarantined in my house. Which is no different from my regular everyday life. <laughs> yeah, which but, is exactly the <laughs> yeah, which is same exact, thing. Exact, yeah. No, but usually I get out and go to the gym. And uh, anytime I've gone out, though, here, I, I put the shades on. But I really wanted to go to the gym to go work out today. But I, I was just, too, my eye was, it was even worse earlier. Should have just worked out I, with the shades on. I mean. I could have. But yeah, yeah. I, I've never, I'm not a big glasses person. I have the Oakleys you gave me. And I had a, yeah. I have another pair, actually. I've always, so it's funny when things happen to you as kids. How, how it kind of shapes you for the rest of your lives or the rest of your life, I should say. And so my, one of my best friends growing up, Kevin Salisbury, mm-hmm. he uh, lived down the road. I was used to ride my bike and go hang out there, play video games, play outside every day. Uh, I remember there was a period, you know, when you go through phases as a kid, Yeah, I, uh, I went through a phase and we played baseball and everything. All the baseball players, we had the, the glasses, the flip up shades. So sure. that like, so I went through a phase where I thought it was really cool to wear the flip-up shades all the oh, time. Oh, boy. It's like kid and, and play, right? They used to have Yeah, those. yeah, yeah. And uh, I'll never forget Kevin Salisbury's mom, Lori Salisbury, uh, had said uh, to Kevin, and Kevin told me, oh, that Ryan just thinks he's so cool with those shades on. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, I, and I go, no, that's, I don't think that. Like, but I was so self-conscious of that as a kid that I, I just quit wearing shades and like, the only time I'll wear them if I'm on my truck and the sun's really bad. I'll really? Throw them on. Yeah, I don't like wearing them because in my head, I feel like I'm trying to be cool. Oh, well, that's God. Like, because of Lori Salisbury telling me that as a kid, or telling Kevin and Kevin telling me. You just so can't wear them indoors. I don't know. Do you remember bouncing at Sully's and the, the guys would come up to the club, into a nightclub wearing the sunglasses? That would always make me angry as fuck. Yeah, yeah, that's... Uh, Hiding behind those windows, man. You can't. Uh, you can't see <laughs> in. The eyes are the window to the soul. So uh, some people. Uh, but 
But I, I was always wondered that because if, if that is bad for my vision being in the sun all the time and, you know, I'm not obviously always looking into the sun, but I should wear them more often just to protect my eyes. Um, but, but I don't. But anyways, I got, I got the pink eye or, or it was beginning. It never, I didn't, it didn't get any of the junk coming out of it or anything. It was just watering. I think I, I cause I caught it right away. So, uh, but, uh, we're just getting over that. I'm hoping tomorrow it, it's pretty much cleared up and, uh, I can go about to my normal routine and, uh, and get back to things. But I was able to do a big workout today, did arms, just go in light still, but my shoulder actually feels better than it even did just before the thing. So, okay. So you're on track, uh, your road to yeah, recovery. Yeah. This is, uh, it's good, man. It's, uh, I told you too today, we actually, I, I there was, and I've done a really good job of, of like we've talked about this before, not being caught up on social media, but occasionally I click on there, like, and it's with the business and everything, it's kind of a necessary evil, but there was another, I had one shit person today, uh, which is not bad. I told mm-hmm. you where they're like, you know, you've been on the independence for nearly a year now, which was wrong. I've only probably been on them because if we remember, I had the nose and ear surgery last year when I left. It I don't remember my in, first you, you November, did, uh, wasn't it? Uh, late or August was, because I remember Big Mike's no, was the first time was a signing. No, but that was just signings I did. I didn't yeah. have my first match, though. October until, was with me. October, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I didn't start till October, essentially. And, and then, you know, the last... I think it's been almost, what have we been going over two months now yeah. since the shoulder deal? So, but I was just like, yeah, oh, you fucking don't have your times right, buddy. But, uh, he goes, and I'm so disappointed at like the amount of buzz or something. And I was just like, Jesus Christ, one of these assholes. And sure. God forbid I take some time, start up a business and, uh, you know, do weekly appearances in wrestling, uh, every week. And, uh, you just, and I'm like, God, well, what's wrong if, with people? If you're not in PWG, if you're not in Ring of Honor, if you're not yeah. in, you just don't matter, man. That's it. You if, just don't if matter. I'm not f- filming Bullet Club fucking promos every week. I, I'm irrelevant. I'm like, God damn, guys. I do like, like the Bullet Club promos. No, I, I think it's be- awesome. Yeah, it's great. But I'm just saying, like, it's in some people's minds, if they can't see things that you're doing, then all of a sudden you're not doing anything. Sure. It's just, it's just, and, but then you click on their profile and look, and it's just like, you see their other tweets, and they're just like, Jesus, what a loser. Loser. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hell of a week. How's your, how's your week going? What's going on with you? Well, I think this is a special episode. It's, a, it's the Father's Day episode. Actually, this will air or go up the day after Father's Day. Um, it was a crazy week because I feel like I'm being haunted. I feel like uh, there's a lot going on. I don't know if you remember last week we did the we did the old questions, which I loved Eddie's soundbite for the for the question part. But uh, my wife, what asked, was that by the way? I, I actually I don't know. I go what back it's from. and listen to the show. What, what was the soundbite though? Because it, was, I, it sounded I like Eddie Murphy. I got questions. Like it was someone like screaming it. Oh, I missed that. I'm gonna have to go back and listen to that part. Ah, oh, see, I listen to every word like a goddamn Mark, and I uh, <laughs> critique ourselves and our run-ons and how we cut our, cut each other off without letting each other finish. It, it's, I like how I say the word like a lot when I talk. That's my one word I notice because when they train, this show is not meant for transcribing, by the way. It is, it's just the way we, in the context of this, it's two friends talking, and it's very mm-hmm. laid back. Where it's not like when I when I do the Jim Ross you know podcast or the Vince Russo podcast or or something like that. It's a little more. It's different because I'm I'm in a more professional element. Whereas this, it's more informal. Laid back. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's my show essentially. So I'm not so uptight about coming across in a professional way as far as like my verbiage all the time. You know, when we go, we talk for a long time. So I have the word like in there a lot. I know, and I'll be like this and like. And they tra- I love when they transcribe, they keep the likes in there. <laughs> Do they? Oh, God, I yeah. missed that. I, I, like, I say totally, I s- and like I did this. And like, yeah, you're a valley uh, girl. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it reminds me of. I say um a lot. I notice that, too. I'm like, fuck, but I hear that back. I'm like, God damn it. Got to be, be a little bit more professional. And, but, but that's uh, not what this is for, and we never – so, you, you know, I don't, I don't think you have to be. By two hours in, I'm fucking drunk off my ass. I'm saying a lot yeah, of – Drinking tequila. Yeah. Well, but uh, this so this week um, or last week, we did a little question segment and my wife asked a comment, uh, a question about going on vacation and, and the old Zika virus. So she brought up that. And then uh, 
you know, I'm, I'm, I'll be, I'll be married a year in August and, uh, a lot of, I'm surrounded by babies. I'm being haunted by babies. Uh, three of her what friends. You... Okay. So, so three of her friends have had babies within the last like three months. Oh yeah. Uh, two of my, Sam Roberts had a, had a, had a baby a couple months ago. Uh, Kurt Hawkins, congratulations. Had a beautiful baby girl yesterday. Uh, Oh, did he? He did. He did. Oh, congratulations to Kurt Hawkins. So, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. And then after that question, I'm like, why did you ask that? She's like, oh, no reason. I'm like, do you want to have a kid? Do you want to have a baby? And she's like, no, it's not time yet. And we both have job stuff to do. She's probably getting a promotion or becoming a principal soon. Or I have my fucking pirate lifestyle. So <laughs> then, she, then she put up a picture on Instagram of her with her friend's baby. And I'm like, what are you doing? People are going to think that that's our kid that and yeah. that a couple of people were like oh congratulations so then uh the so baby doesn't just, have red hair i don't believe i don't believe. yeah so <laughs> she did that and i'm like okay like maybe she wants to i don't fucking know but i'm just surrounded by babies non-stop i go to the gym i look inside the gym there's a big daycare it's just filled with babies and they're just all staring at me we yeah. get home i had some downtime we started a new show. We like to watch Netflix and Amazon Prime together. I put on an episode. It's a, of Catastrophe. It's a new show we're watching. It's really good. All about a fucking pregnancy. All about people having kids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, what the fuck? Now, here's the craziest thing. So our air condition, we have central air now. And it, it's kind of rare in New York. Uh, but our apartment's like kind of nice. But it stopped working. It's not as cool as it should be. We had a couple hot days. So she calls the landlord, and the landlord's like, you know, sorry, there's nothing we can do about it. That's as high as it goes. You may have to get a, a wall unit as well. And then uh, she was like kind of upset. She's like, you know, we're going to have to buy another air conditioner because they can't fix the central air to get it as cool as we want. Then he calls her back two hours later, and he goes, you know what? I've been thinking about it. I'm going to buy you guys a brand new uh, central air conditioning unit, but I'm doing this for your baby. And I'm going, What? He thinks that we have a fucking child for some reason. Well, is, then you certainly do. Congratulations. So I need to borrow a baby because my landlord <laughs> thinks <Yeah>. that. <laughs> but it's been on my brain, man. Like, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Like, Can Hawkins swing over with the kid? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, that would just let him. Hold, you're just holding the baby uh, when they walk in. That, and uh, that could work. But uh, so I've been haunted by babies and. You know, uh, I'm thinking about it, but I, I think I think maybe in a couple months we'll start trying. So we'll see. That's a, that's a subject where I feel like so again, a lot of people, a lot of times it happens by accident for the yeah. majority of the, the majority of the time. And then there's the times when it, obviously it's planned. Were you an uh, accident? Do you ever ask your parents that or no? I, I never do. I just always I figured I was. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> I I asked. I just I, assumed everyone's an accident. Uh, <laughs> I remember I asked my mom when I was little, I was like, mom, was I an accident? She got like really scared and that I knew right there I was, <laughs> but <laughs> oh, well, I, I don't give two shits. I'm here now. So like, I don't care how the fuck it happened, planned or not planned. But, uh, a lot of people that's, um, from the different books that I just reading over the years and whatnot, I think it's cool to be able to have the option in, in, do it when you're actually ready rather than when before you're not, because it is, it's a huge responsibility, obviously. And mm -hmm. it changes. But I mean, you look at people, the world is created to keep you in debt. Now that's the way I feel. Okay. And I feel the best thing that you could do for yourself is set yourself up to be financially wealthy and stable before bringing another life into the world in an ideal situation. Now, does it always work out like that? Absolutely not. No. So I think it's, it's you are in a prime position to where you have that control, um, where a lot of people don't always have that control. Because you look at a lot, a lot of kids, a lot of younger people, you start spitting out two, three, four babies, you're in a really tough position to ever really get out of that hole as yep. far as financially. Because you were put, you because those lives have to come first. Not that they always do in, in a lot of cases, but if you're anything of a remotely good human being, those come first. It's a so, lot of time, a lot of time, a lot of energy. It's a big commitment, man. So, uh, you know, I'm going to eventually have to have mine on my back in the little harness as I'm in the gym <laughs> working out and, <laughs> and the two dogs in the front harnesses and uh, just walking around my back completely shot and uh, making town still. What uh, 
here, well, here's the thing. I get a little bit of grief because uh, I'm 33. My wife is 32. And like people put plenty like this, of time still. That's what I feel like, too. But like, you know, they have this calendar in their head like, oh, I don't want to be 35. I don't I don't want to be 43 with our friends and raising a baby. Yeah. Uh, I don't I, I don't put any stock into what other people are doing. I think you got to do what you feel in your heart and. You can't make decisions based on what your friends are doing because that's uh, that's no way to go through life. You know what I mean? Absolutely. But uh, so I think that... you guys are fine. I mean, but she's hinting. She might be dropping hints, but you can milk that for a couple of years. <laughs> she's a 40-year-old dad coming up. <laughs> Just uh, <laughs> <laughs> hop on something to, to drop down the sperm count and uh, just give it your best shot, but you just can't quite make it happen yet. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Ah, that's I don't, uh, I don't. We'll figure this out. I'm almost yeah. ready. I'm almost there. I'm not there yet. I'm I'm warming up to the idea. But I had a great week. Outside of that, uh, I had a I just great picture show. you at WrestlePro and with Lauren there and you carrying the baby and having to hand her the baby and just blowing up and like having Fuck. to handle all the wrestlers and. What you, am I going to do? She doing she does the tickets. tickets with the baby in one arm and trying to do the tickets in the other. Oh, uh, we're baby real... <laughs> wearing the all American big guy shades on their face. Fuck, we're w- real white trash family. She's a, uh, I'm promoting pro wrestling, and she's at the fucking ticket thing with the kid and the stroller. God damn, what is my life? I almost, I almost became a doctor. <laughs> I'm doing this now. Uh, uh, but speaking of Happy Father's Day to everybody, you know, out there. That was yesterday, of course, and it was. Uh, hope everybody had a good weekend, and uh, yeah. I had a great, that's all, uh, that's all you got. That's all I got. I had a, a nice weekend too. I had a successful show that been, thanks to this podcast. A lot of people came up to me and told me they supported this, um, helps promote this stuff. We had about 600 people in Keyport, uh, hit the convention, the legends of the ring convention during the daytime with old Stu Bennett. He had his first taste of, uh, independent wrestling action later on, but, uh, caught up with a lot of people at the convention. It was cool. I saw Beth Phoenix. I, I, oh, yeah. I told, I told how, that. how'd that go? So during the convention, and, and you, you've seen these things, and it's like half and half where you see guys, you're like, wow, they're doing really well. And then you see other half of guys, and you're like, oh, fuck. This is, this is uh, kind of sad and kind of scary. When but, you say uh, that, what do you mean? Like when you say doing well as far as like a line and stuff? You can just tell when people are in a, in a good frame of mind, you know, okay. and they have things going for themselves, and like they've just, they have outside career whether they're in wrestling or not in wrestling whether you know they could be successful in life and like hey i'm just here because i i i really like you know like you know i really like pete gas okay he's on long islands got his own thing going he just loves being around wrestling he's there because he wants to be but he doesn't need it you know what i mean yeah yeah and there's a lot of these guys that i feel like are just i i feel for them like you can tell like and they're never it's weird to watch too because i was there bright in the morning and these I don't want to call out names at all, but you know, no, certain you guys that have had major exposure, more exposure than I've ever fucking had come strolling in and they have their issues and they're just there to make a quick buck and leave. And it just, it's alarming because the wrestling business eats up a lot of people. If you don't have that strong will or, you know, right mindset, it destroys people. It's, it sucks it, no, it really does. And it's when you put every, all your eggs into one basket. It, That's it. It's, it's what it is, and it's, um, it's With on not top the of, easiest business. And a lot of people don't have – and it, I, I think it's a mixture of the business could be so good for some people so long, but then when it comes down to developing these life skills that you might need or these habits, you're not used to working for – you know putting in that extra effort into life, and you kind of see what happens to people. But overall, it wasn't that case when I, 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 I saw Beth was in another room. I'm like, oh, let me go see if, if she's available. I saw her, and I, I haven't seen her in 10 years. It was awesome to talk talk with her for a little bit. Um, and I told her, I said, you know, I haven't seen you in 10 years. But uh, there was a point where I was kind of down and out, and you said a really kind word about me on a podcast. And, you know, that kind of gave me a little bit of hope. And I now have, you know, what I have. And I And she was aware, but she wasn't aware. And she's like... You know, I told her about it, and she got teary eyed, and I got teary eyed, and it was a oh man, that's great, a nice moment, and uh, you know, she uh, she was really, really it was great to see her, but it was a good day with old Stu Bennett, hell of a show, and uh, hell of a match I had, which is on uh, WrestleProOnline.com right now, just to plug I'm, that uh, stuff. I'm picturing 
you talking to Beth and like, you know, you guys are having this great interaction and uh, you say, you know, the, those words that you told me and, and you know, it gave me the strength to, to keep going on. And now I've made it. I do a podcast with the big guy. And uh, she, <laughs> she, she just looks at you and goes, who? <laughs> what, what the fuck is that? <laughs> That's funny. Actually, you know what? Edge does a podcast now, too. Edge and Christian. Him and Christian, a, yeah. They're, they're killing it as well. Just two guys yeah. talking about bullshit, which is really all good podcasts are. There's plenty of room for everybody out there. That's what everybody does brings their own unique style and uh, their own um, flavor to the podcast world. And there's, there's billions of people on this planet. There's, there's plenty of room for they, everyone always says like the podcast world is so overfilled and it, there are a lot of it, it's opportunities now are, are much more available than they used to be in the past. So it's um, why wouldn't you want to take advantage of that and do something that's fun and um, people enjoy. And, and, you know, we started this thing off and, and it was uh, and look, we've grown it into what it is and it hasn't even been a year yet. And it's it's the most fun I have all week. So. Uh, it's uh, very thankful for the opportunities w- that we have these days. And I think that going forward, we have a lot of stuff that we can't, I hate to blue ball the audience, but we have a lot of fun stuff coming up in the near future where I think this show is really going to grow with certain strategic alliances, but I, I can't wait for this stuff to go down the road and to maybe open this up to a brand new audience. Yeah, no, that's the thing. And I think the people, the new listeners that we do get every week, the the positive feedback has been overwhelming as far as, and it's pretty, you know, across the board, everybody's enjoying the show and it's, uh, it's a really cool thing to see and people following me with this part of my career and, and, uh, getting ready, you know, revamping myself here and healing up for another big run. And, uh, which is in the very near future and along with, uh, keeping feed me more nutrition growing. And that's, that is, uh, the legs for that are, are holding its own now. And, uh, it's very exciting, but I was going to go somewhere with this, and I can't quite remember what I was going to say. I do but have... I just, sorry, oh, go I was, was going to... We're the kings of cutoff. <laughs> but uh, I was just going to say, do we want to... We've been bantering. I say we should get into little plugs with a little happy music. I don't know. Yeah, why not? Let's go ahead, Eddie. Let's go ahead and throw in the song of the week, which we will... Uh, you will know by the song of the week. And do you want to start this off, or you know, do you want you want the big guy to go ahead and keep the, keep to the format? We can start. This is really our trick to play some entertaining music, plug a song, and for you to listen to our plugs as we as we say them right now. What's the song of the week, big guy? What do you got? Oh, I don't have it yet. I'm going to have to think about this. I okay. can't. Uh, yeah, on on the on the spot, I can't. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. Limp Biscuit, my way or the highway. That's my okay. one of my all time favorite songs. So Eddie, let's go ahead and throw that in. Here we go. All, all right, guys. All fan mail, please send P.O. Box 752740, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89136. To the big guy, Ryback. I love getting your fan mail, guys. I get back to you all the time. i got to swing by there tomorrow with my old pink eye and uh, giving you guys all pink eye. Um, Feed Me More Nutrition, available now at feedmemore.com. Spartan Nutrition in North Las Vegas, all pump you up.com. And now available on Amazon, guys. So go ahead and check out Amazon for all your Feed Me More nutrition needs. Uh, and we got some great deals going on over at feedmemore.com. Wake Up, It's Feeding Time, the motivational book by the big guy Ryback, available now on Amazon. Amazon reviews are greatly appreciated. Fuel Meals, the personal meal prep service. For myself, save 10% with discount code the big guy. Feeding Time 2.0, the official theme song for myself on the Independence is now available on iTunes. And Holosync Meditation, available on FeedMeMore.com, is the personal meditation program that I've been using for the last seven years. Conversation with the big guy, this podcast you're listening to, reviews are appreciated. Please keep sharing, guys. And uh, the official Facebook for Feed Me More Nutrition is at Feed Me More Nutrition. And the official Twitter for Conversation with the big guy, at CWTBG. And that's all for me this week. Okay, Russell Pro returns, or should I say debuts, Allentown, New Jersey, Thursday, July 13th. Ryback will be there, Cody Rhodes will be there, Hornswog will be there, I'll be there, and so will the, the regular cast of Russell Pro, WrestlePROonline.com for tickets. Uh, July 29th, CreativeProWrestling.com will have a show in Long Island. I believe we're switching venues for uh, 
for a reason I'll talk about on a future podcast. But uh, check out creativeprowessing.com to keep you updated with that ticket information. I believe in August, August 10th, I'm doing a fundraiser with Russell Pro and Creative Pro for the NYPD. I met with them today. We signed the contract. We're going to put on a, a hell of a fundraiser uh, for the, the old boys in blue on August 10th. Tickets will be online very soon. And uh, I won't plug September. We're too far out. But if you want to be a wrestler, creativeprowrestling.com, New York and New Jersey schools. And that's all I got. End music. Cut the music. <laughs> you know what? Uh, Feedback from last week's show, we did our, uh, the old, the, the, the top uh, gimmicks for, uh, for myself on the independents, mm-hmm. and uh, the poll that we put up last week, it was uh, pretty overwhelming. That's right. It, it came into number one and two. Um, number one, or I should well, say number two. We need a little be- drum roll here for, uh, first of all, let's, let's, I dare we say, for those that missed last week. This was this idea was what gimmick are you going to use? We 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 had a creative meeting, the top five gimmicks that we thought you could use, get a little more buzz. And uh the fans voted. Uh you supporters of the conversation with the big guy. So do you want to say number two first? Or you want to say number one? Yeah, number two was uh one actually probably the most realistic out of all of them, I felt anyways. Um, it was Big Daddy Ryback in which okay. I, I grow the hair out just a little bit, the short haircut, bleach it, bleach the beard possibly, um, and a very, uh, you know, Scott Steiner, everything kind of originated from superstar Billy Graham, and this is, is my rendition of it, to change it up and uh, get in the best shape of my life, and, uh, you know, uh, Big Daddy Ryback is on the attack, feed me if you need me, that's the, that's the phrase. And, uh, and go from there, which I also got a message. I got a nice Facebook message from some fucking loser that, no uh, he very detailed, but it, it never ceases to amaze me. The, the, this guy spent a considerable amount of time writing this long message on, on how he heard that I say that I have to shave my head every day and how he doesn't think that's true. How that, how he, he looked at photo after photo of my hairline and he saw that I have a receding hairline, which I have fucking openly said yeah. I've had since I was 25. But my hair grows very fast still. I actually can grow a full head of hair. I have the, the widow's peak. And, uh, but he was just so pissed off that he goes, you, you suffer from male pattern baldness. And like, just, you know, and I'm like, but what is wrong with people? Even if you did, you would still have hair on the sides. And wouldn't you yeah. shave that to have your look? Fuck, man. Yeah, yeah. No, again, I looked at his profile. There's nothing on it. No pictures, nothing. And I'm just like, it, it just, it all, it's all the same story every time. And uh, so, but, but I would be able to grow my hair out to bleach it for this, just so everybody out there listening knows. Um, but Big Daddy Ryback came in at number two. But number one, the number one choice was overwhelming. The people have spoke, have spoken, and uh, <laughs> the big gay Ryback uh, was overwhelmingly the number one choice by our listeners out there. Eddie hit that theme music. Uh, Feed lady. me, dicks. It really na, must, have, na, 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 na. must have been the, the old penis singlet that got them. That's, what the fuck are we talking about? I hear. I, I, love- I do have a follow up question though. This is a serious thing. Okay, so okay. just to go with this, I had this thought. So now, hypothetically, legit serious question because I could see this legit happening. Vince calls you up and he says, "You know, I have to meet with you." Fly, flies you, sends the private jet, flies you to Stanford. Him and Hunter are in a room, and they they go, "We've we we apologize for everything." We have a con. We, ha- we they also have your lawyer there, and they have their legal team. They have Jerry McDivitt there, whoever there, and uh, like we have this contract for you. We want you to to headline WrestleMania. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna go up on Brock for the title, but you just have to wear the pe- the penis singlet. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> it's all in writing. What would you do? <laughs> I don't. But what would be the whole point of this? This is just like one of those fuck, Mary kill questions. It's just so ridiculous. That's not a real thing, though. That's not a real. I thought you were going to say, but we need you to do the big gay Ryback character nope. moving forward. No, and I, wouldn't, I would say no, because anything you do like that, it, it, 
the the audience there's such a large portion that believe it's so fucking real and the the characters that you're playing are real and they they get caught up that that it carries over to other parts of your life so i'd be like no i wouldn't i wouldn't need to do that there's nothing in that for me whatsoever Mm -hmm. at this point in my life and that would obviously that's not a real situation that would ever come up Uh, (laughs) you never know i would laugh (laughs) there was a meeting and that was discussed look we heard you talking about the dick singlet we do like it I just like the fact that they had one made and it's like on a hanger. They're like, you just got to put this on. If it, is it only for one match? Just one match. That's it. It's just it's subtly out there. They just. I think that there's a good chance too that that the, like people maybe just confuse and not know what it, what is all over the singlet. <laughs> yeah, just... that's it's it's all those hammers. <laughs> why, yeah, why are they they're, different colors? That would have to be my out. They were meant to be a bunch of hammers because I was gonna fucking hammer him at WrestleMania. Came out like a bunch of dicks. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> we also messed up last uh, week. With, it wasn't apparently snog means to kiss in uh, in old British terms. We had a couple Brits writing to yeah. us, and I, I I I didn't know that, so I learned something new from uh from the old feedback. So thank you guys. I, I did not know yeah. that was a thing. I, I always like learning new things, so that's. Uh... Very interesting. That cha- that would have changed everything, possibly, because we had it meaning to have sex, right? Yeah, and we just kind of push it to the side, but, you know, making yeah. it with Dolph wouldn't have been that bad. So <laughs> He's got the long, big gay ride back. He has the long blonde hair. Just, uh, just pretend, man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so oh. what else have we got here? I can get into reviews. We can talk a little wrestling. We can take a break. Where do we go from here? Yeah, let's go ahead. We'll take our first break for the evening, and we'll be right back after these messages. Do you enjoy a crisp, refreshing soft drink, but hate choosing between empty calories and artificial sweeteners? Well, now you don't have to, thanks to Zevia. With Zevia, you won't have to worry about any potential harmful side effects since they have no caramel coloring and use the natural plant-based sweetener, Stevia. Zevia offers 14 different flavors of soda, four flavors of sparkling water, and four different energy drinks. That gives you a ton of safer and delicious options for you to enjoy. It's the safest soft drink on the market, made with ingredients you'd find in your own kitchen, stupid. There's nothing artificial in any of their products, and there aren't any calories either. It's a miracle. Now Zevia is giving our fans the chance to try it yourselves for free. If you live in the United States or Canada, just head over to zevia.com slash podcast and sign up. They'll mail you a coupon for a free six-pack just like that. Go to zevia.com slash podcast now and get your free six-pack. Just enter your information at zevia.com slash podcast and they'll mail a coupon in the mail. Unless you're like Zack Ryder like to complain about everything, you know it. They don't actually send an actual six-pack, guys. It is a coupon to redeem your free six-pack. Easy enough, right? So what are you waiting for? Get to it. Hey, everyone. In addition to being the co-host of this podcast, I'm the founder and promoter of WrestlePro. Dare I say, WrestlePro puts on the best professional wrestling live events in the country. We're also fully insured and licensed. Now, if you're listening to the show, then you clearly love professional wrestling, and I appreciate that. I also have a question for you. Would you like professional wrestling in your area, maybe in your hometown, your high school, your college, your civic center, your stadium, whatever you want? If you're a civic group, a sports team, a fire department, a police department, if you have a corporate event, a festival, any group that is looking to raise funds or put on an entertaining show, WrestlePro is your promotion. This is not your regular wrestling show. Just in the last year, WrestlePro has brought in incredible talent, such as Terry Funk, DDP, Booker T, Ryback, Cody Rhodes, Hornswoggle, Cole Cabana, Brian Cage, Jeff Jarrett, Tommy Dreamer, The Hardy Boys, Scott Steiner, and much, much more. Even the nature boy Ric Flair has been with WrestlePro and loves it. Tell him, Nate. It's the nature boy. Woo! Ric Flair, WrestlePro, the nature boy, song autograph. Look as only he can look. Russell Pro, be there. Woo, 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 woo. Limousine riding, jet flying. Woo, Russell Pro. Woo. If you're seriously interested, Russell Pro can bring a live wrestling show to your town. A full professional wrestling card complete with talent, eight matches, sound system, lighting, the works. We design the artwork and posters. We help you sell the tickets. We push all of our events all over our social media. We believe in good repeat business. 
Packages and prices vary on talent requested and their availability. For more information, contact me directly at russellproonline at yahoo.com or simply check out www.russellproonline.com and you can see our past and upcoming events to get a taste of what Russell Pro is all about. I hope to hear from you soon. All right, we're back and uh, I got a little wrestling news. We got anything else before that? No, it's been uh, so news with Feed Me More Nutrition. Uh, the fat burner shell shock extreme fat burner is officially now in production with the new manufacturer over in California. And, um, okay. I, I decided to, to switch manufacturers, uh, logistically to, to cut down on shipping cost. And these guys are, are one of the top supplement manufacturers in the game and, um, finally got all that worked out. So it was delayed a little bit as we were, we were switching everything over, um, but I'm hoping. Why should people? Why should people take a fat burner? I don't think you've ever like talked about that. What's the benefit? I've never really taken many fat. It burners. depends. So like I've always been like when I was younger, I, I talked about this. I think we talked about this briefly before that I used to cycle fat burners, and by cycle them, I mean take one brand and then another brand and then another brand. Since I was probably mm-hmm. in my early twenties, uh, okay. and I ended up being on them for nearly. I would say from 20, 20 years old, 21 years old to 28 years old with, with little breaks in there, but not a lot where I would go from one brand to the other. But a lot of the old fat burners, like the ones that had ephedrine and these other things, they had other stimulants in there and all these other things that, that you're only meant to take those things for two or three months, like when you're dieting. And then you're supposed yeah. to give your body a break. And when you say give your body a break, you mean give your thyroid a break because you're taking these outside outside ingredients and these things that mm-hmm. in those things, they they were a lot of them were not natural ingredients. And they were used to to raise like your thyroid output or different things. And what they do is they can slow your thyroid down if you don't take time off of them, which I experienced firsthand by when I broke my ankle and, and leg and I decided when I was out during that year and a half, I was like, man, I've been on fat burners for pretty much my whole like adult life. I feel like pretty with okay. very small breaks in between. And I was like, I need to stop these. And I was, uh, I remember I was fine for about maybe one to two weeks and I just crashed and my thyroid crashed and I didn't know what it was, but I got really where I was tired all the time. Uh, hmm. And then I couldn't, I started getting this side fat started forming back when I was out with this thing. And I went from being like 200, I was 295 pounds before this happened and absolutely shredded. And I all of a sudden started, my weight started going down and I started getting body fat and my diet was exactly the same. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So I made an appointment okay. with my doctor and they did blood work and my thyroid was bottomed out, which... They, they hmm. wanted to put me on thyroid medication. And I was like, I'm 28 years old. I go, I don't need to be put on this. And I started doing some research and I found coconut oil was actually a natural, really? natural alternative taking two, three, four tablespoons a day. Because usually I do one to two tablespoons a day now, um, mm-hmm. sometimes three, uh, because it's a very good fat and it actually helps increase your metabolism. But it yeah. also is great for possibly preventing Alzheimer's. There's a little bit of a research going around on that, and but it has been shown time and time again to restore normal thyroid function, even in people that have taken thyroid medications, come off the medication, switch to the coconut oil, and their natural thyroid output uh, has been back to from brought back to normal. So I said, well, I'm going to give this a shot and see before I just decide to hop on a medication for the rest of my life, if I can get this thyroid firing again, because I've been on these fat burners for a long time. So it's probably going to take a while for it to, to normalize. And within three months, my thyroid went back to high normal being on the coconut Mm -hmm. oil every day. And I was mega dosing it. So, um, for anybody out there listening, if a lot of women have thyroid issues, coconut oil is your best friend. And, uh, I believe Barry treasures the brand. It's in a plastic bottle and it's on Amazon, but it's made by Buried Treasure. That's the one that I use huh. because I, on the road, I was taking the glass bottles for a while. And, and the, the <laughs> goddamn fucking airlines were breaking it in my bag. I can't tell you how. I would wrap it up in a big, heavy, like, hotel towel. And I can't yeah. tell you how many times that bottle was broken. 
And just the, the <laughs> towels. It smells delicious, though. It smells like that, a beautiful that towel island. looks like a big cum rag. Just like, <laughs> like just, and it was, I was like, okay, I got to find a plastic bottle. So the Berry Treasure is the brand that I use. But so the fat burner that I'm coming out with is all natural ingredients, things that don't fuck with your thyroid, things that I've been using for years now to stay lean and burn body fat uh, in a natural way. Again, this whole thing is me just sharing my secrets my entire adult life of creating my own formulas. Uh, and it has, I love it. It has yeah. things like apple cider vinegar, which anybody who's ever known mm-hmm. me knows that I've always been a big advocate of apple cider vinegar. I remember Harry and TJ in, in developmental always asking me questions on the apple cider vinegar and uh, green coffee bean, green tea extract, uh, cayenne mm-hmm. pepper, but things with the cayenne pepper to keep it cool so, so it doesn't burn you. Uh, and, and huh. just those are just some of the ingredients, things that are natural ingredients that help your body naturally burn more body fat. And it's not going to fuck up your thyroid and things like things with and, and the caffeine content is very low for these because I always assume if you're taking the fat burner, you're taking the pre-workout. So I want to make sure like the caffeine was kept low enough where it's really not going to interfere with taking any of the other supplements and things like that. Uh, and then we got some other really cool ingredients in there. So it's, uh, I'm excited Great. about it, people. It's, they're going to like it, and the ball is rolling on that, and, and I can hopefully get that out here in the summer, midsummer for you guys, and uh, we'll be rocking and rolling on that, and that will be the next. We will all no longer have the big three. We'll have the big four. Wow, I think I just sold you a couple of bottles of that. That was interesting. <laughs> Fuck. Thanks, Buck. All right. So now we got to uh, talk a little wrestling, a little Sure. What do you got? What do you got? What's news? going on this week in the old wrestling world? I just took a couple of cliff notes, not a whole lot from what I see, no like real glaring topics, but you know, for starters, the ratings seem to be a little bit down and this is conversation with the big guys. So just want to get your take and maybe I'll chime in on, a, on the old ratings. A lot of, so I've always, our good buddy JD, you know, messaged me this week about that and was talking about that. And I guess a lot of people are, are making a, a big deal that the ratings are down and, but again, in, in the, the audience is different today as far as viewing habits because I do – you got to understand that compared to 15 years ago, there's a lot more options to on TV and with cell phones and people yeah. – everybody has ADD now with cell phones and just constantly the attention spans are shorter in social media. It's – everything is completely different. So, I mean, I, I guess are they, they're typically at the top of their the ra- – like the ratings as far as – for the most most watched shows for the evening usually, right? Or no? Yeah, and I think it's just one of those things where it's just so down compared to where things were in Attitude Era. But it's a different time. And obviously it's not as mainstream as it was. Yeah. That's clear as day. But, Absolutely. And not to defend know. it by any means as far as that, but I always try to give an honest opinion. If, 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 if things were better, I think they would be better. Uh, I, I, don't know, I don't know how much better... But I think they would be better than they are rather than because you got to look at they're hitting like lows for the year, all time lows. Mm-hmm. We're close to it within the last year. And I know you like uh, the, the buddy of mine sent over the picture this week of the live event show that was really like yeah. and I was like, that's that's the worst I've ever seen it from all my time up there. And again, a picture can be deceiving and you, I wasn't there. So I don't maybe the whole other side was packed. I don't know. But going off of that picture, I was like, ah, that's, you know, hopefully they improve. I don't know what, uh, it's hard. It's hard to say. But again, in, in comparison, you look at, you can't say ratings are down overall and everything because the big sporting events are drawing better than ever, right? From ever. I, w- I mean, I, I don't really know. I, I, I can't make an active comparison. But I, I mean, I think it's safe to say the, pro- the product's not in a great place. It's not in a terrible place, but. Things could be a whole fucking lot better. I mean, this isn't the show to kind of rant and rave about what we could do to fix yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, not at all. If you know, I think overall, if there's just a little bit more preparation, maybe uh, things will. Well, that's not kind of the point of this whole episode, which we forgot to to mention in the beginning, <laughs> is that this episode, the little thing at the end, we have fun with, will be the the the, the shows we want to see on the network. How how do we get interest back in pro wrestling? It might not help the Raw or SmackDown ratings. But maybe it'll help the ratings for uh, the WWE Network for the up there those subscriber you know counts. If we if we add some of these shows, and I can't wait for that part. Uh, I'm excited. I have my top eight, and uh, 
that should be a fun time later on in the show tonight. No, but I just think that uh, the big sporting events are drawing great numbers still. And, uh, but they found ways, you got to understand, they, seem, they found ways to make money in so many different avenues with, with, with the business and the brand that they maybe don't have to put as much stock into the ratings, which they always should. As far as, I mean, yeah. you, you obviously they would be happier if the ratings were higher, right? Uh, because we've seen sure. when the ratings do do good numbers, they do boast about it and whatnot. So it, it's just, I do think it, it, it's, it's a much tougher environment today with the amount of choices that you have. But the amount of choices haven't changed that much in the last year, and the numbers are down in the last year. So that's the one thing you look, well, there's not that many different you know, new additions in the last year of, of viewing habits. It's all pretty much been this, this day of social media and whatnot. It's been the same for a while now. So, But, you know, they, they could always, I'm sure they'll improve and whatnot, but it definitely would be something to, definitely has to raise raised a few eyes around there, I'd imagine. Another thing in the news that is kind of personal, but I have to say it just because it was in the news or just get your take on it. A little bit, one of the more personal things I saw, and not to kind of repeat it, but it's hard to kind of ignore it. We, we, we loosely made a kind of a joke about it in the past, but not, but nothing compared to the situation at hand. Uh, Bray Wyatt's personal life was kind of put out there, you know, and just wanted to kind of uh, get your take on the situation without kind of, you know, you know what I mean. What was the joke made? I don't know on that. Well, just, it was funny how, Remember that headline came out about you about doing? Oh uh, yeah, I forgot all about that. Actually, I know. Yeah, it, yeah, I just, you know, there was, and that was in total playful nature, kind of funny story thing. Yeah, no, but, I'm not uh, gonna. I don't know anything about the situation. I just know Bray has always been somebody I've been very, you know, gotten along with great up there, and I've known him all the way from developmental. And I think the only thing I could add, without even touching on that, is. I think people have to understand whether who knows what's true and what's not true and anything. And it's none of my business as far as that goes, but being on the road, I will say you got to understand when you're on the road four or five days a week, it, it, it is, and this isn't to defend anything or anything of that nature. It, it is that job is not the ideal job to have a family in it. And a lot of mm-hmm. guys do, but I, I think that's also why you see a lot of guys date within the business now, because it's, it's few and far, far between the amount of people that have successful marriages out of there um, that have been there for any substantial amount of time. And when you're there too, it's really easy to become caught up and you become obsessed with work because that's all, that's mm-hmm. your life. And you're, you're constantly competing within that, that group of talent. And that is the environment that Vince has created of just competing. And I was inside of it and I told, like I became obsessed and like I, no matter how they were booking me, fuck this, I'm going to be better, I'm going to be better, I'm going to be better. And you're constantly trying to prove to one man that you deserve to have everything. And that is what everybody is playing that game up there. And, uh, or those two guys now. Or, or whatever the situation may be. And it's very easy to, became lost, to become lost in that world. And it's not, not the best job for having a wife and kids. But, and that, and that, that's not even talking, that's not, talking about Bray's situation. That's just talking from my experience being up there. And I would have hated to have a wife and kids sitting at home. I miss my goddamn dogs enough being on the road. Like it mm-hmm. is, it is not an easy lifestyle and you're beat up and you're hurt and you're miserable at times. And it's, uh, sucks that that was even put out there that that even fucking made news. I actually to touch on this. I actually got approved at my merch by Amazon, which is online now on Amazon. Um, okay. <laughs> which I talked about a little bit last week, but essentially it's my own clothing line now on Amazon. It took about four or five months to get approved on there, which uh, they don't approve uh, everybody for that. So I was very fortunate to get approved, but um, I could essentially now take my designs and they're made to order. And it's uh, it's a really, it's my own pro wrestling tease essentially. Um, and by, by that is I could have any kind of shirt I want on my store. There's no limits. I could sell 20 shirts. I could sell 100 shirts. There's no, there's no cost in keeping inventory or anything like that. But So one of my shirts from one of the topics we talked about with like the dirt sheet writers and these reporters out there is uh, I got a shirt being made right now that just says dirt sheet reporter. And on the back, it okay. says credentials, none. 
um, which is like one of like so, sh- like so shit like that. Just random bull, funny shit. Uh, there'll be non wrestling related things on there. Things that I could use my creative mind. And uh, if you guys have any ideas for T-shirts that you would like to see moving forward, I am open to any ideas. And the, it's never a bad thing to speak up if you have an idea you want to see uh, be put on a T-shirt. So just wanted to throw that in there. All right. In uh, major headlines, Conor McGregor will be fighting. I mean, this is old news by the time this comes out. We'll be fighting Wait, Floyd. What, not, even a week, not even a week old, Pat. <laughs> I feel like, you know what it is, man? And I, you can give your take. But my take on this is I'm a, I'm a, I want to see it, obviously. I'm excited to see it. I'm a huge Connor Mark. But uh, I'm just I'm going to I'm so tired already of hearing the conversation about how Mayweather obviously is the better boxer and is going to kill him, but but Connor has a chance. I'm just so sick of everyone's opinion. That's what they do, though. They're going <laughs> to. This is this is uh, the media's dream right now. I think that I will say I think this breaks all pay per view buy rates of all time uh, by far. Because, number one, because number you know one. why? It's a great story. It doesn't even matter because you have potentially one of the greatest boxers, if not one of the greatest boxers of all time, and one yeah. of the the top mixed martial artist in the world today. Uh, definitely top one, draw, yeah, yeah. one of the top acts. And uh, they're going to fight at the 150-something pound mark, I believe. And uh, I, who, Oh, I didn't even know that. Okay. Who cares what happens? It's, it doesn't, everyone's going to give their opinion one way or the other. There's no way to know. But it's like the media is saying Trump wasn't going to be the president, but they were mm-hmm. wrong. It's, people yeah. are wrong all the time, so... I think it's, it's here in Vegas. I would love to actually go to that. That would uh, actually, you know what? I say that I love being in. I would rather watch it on my TV and hear the commentary than be caught up in that madness. Um, I don't know what the fuck I was thinking saying that, but um, <laughs> just I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna break break an all time pay per view record buy rate um, by the time it's all said and done because it's just such a. It's not an everyday. It, that's a once in a lifetime fight as far as you know, two different fields like that coming in. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's amazing. And I think after that, Connor, regardless, will start his own company. That's what I think. They're going to, they're going to have to give him UFC equity. You think, or he's going to, he's going to have to, they're not going to be able to afford him unless he has ownership in the company. Or I I have a feeling he will, whatever his contract is, he'll honor it or figure out a way out of it or buy his way out. And he'll start his own promotion. He fights on his own thing where he keeps everything or he keeps, you know, a good portion of it. He like, has that entrepreneur mindset where rather than sure. working for fucking other people, he works for himself. And that is the greatest mindset to have. I would like to see him win um, just because I, I like where his mind is at as far as he, he dreams big, but he works fucking just as hard, if not harder. So he, uh, he always backs it up. So I think he, people are obviously, you know, Mayweather's been in the boxing game for a long time and it's that one skill he is fucking amazing at. I just think it's a great story. I think just the fact that Connor has the balls to – you're not going to see Mayweather jump into the MMA world and go, you no. know what I mean? Uh, but to see Connor, no, fuck it. I'll go do it. But he's going to get paid for it, and he should be paid for it because he's providing endless entertainment for everybody for months ahead of time and on that night. And I, I, think, it, I think it breaks records. All right. I think we got a little bit of uh, reviews of the week coming up. That's all I got as far as the old wrestling stuff. I was going to say, I, I caught a little bit of Raw this week, too. Oh, I forgot about that. The, uh, okay. No, I, I do. I, I, don't, I don't watch a ton, but I, I try to watch a little bit every week. The, uh, I think I, I'm digging the Lesnar Joe stuff. I think that's going to. Yeah, they, they've presented that very, very well. Very well. And uh, I just, I liked the whole thing. So I think that's. Uh, it's like, man, I w- I'd like to see that match. They've, uh, it's nice to see them do something with a guy and uh, putting him in there with Brock and making it look believable. So it's, uh, I'm, I'm curious to see how that plays out. But that was one thing I got from this week. I was like, fucking, that was really good. Reviews of the week. Reviews. Master of His Own Destiny by Gunnar Hey E-S-Y. I can't, or Hey Hayesy. The honest and positive view of you guys in life have made me more positive in life. Four years ago, I left work. I left a workplace that was very negative and was bringing me down with it. 
Recently, my current company disbanded and left me with the option of earning less money or earning a little more money with my old negative company. I knew I could have hand, I could handle going back to my old negative company because after listening to the podcast and how Ryback dealt with the negativity in his life and came out stronger, I knew I could make my old company a product of me rather than I knew that I could make my old company a product of me rather than myself a product of my old negative company. P.S. I live in the U.K., but I have a USA iTunes account from when the WWE Network first started and was unavailable in the U.K., and I am still paying nine ninety nine instead of paying £9.99 once it launched in the U.K. Who's the mark now? Keep up the good work, you guys. So he's living in the U.K. now? Yes. Okay. That's not going to play into <laughs> my decision at all. No, of course, of course not. Why would why it? Why would it with the $70 shipping? <clears throat> Still a great podcast by Cruz Riguez 27. A couple months back, I left a review praising the podcast for being awesome. Now I'm back to say that months later, every episode is still awesome. Well, thank you. And yes, we're putting ourselves over. I love the honesty from Ryback and Pat. And it's great to hear a little bit about the wrestling business from their perspective, especially since they aren't afraid to be honest. They share stories. They give a bunch of advice. God damn it. What the fuck is that? Sorry. Take pulling back up for uh, round two. God damn. Damn. Fuck. Dead man walking. You've done it now. You've done it made up in the state. <laughs> I do my best to let other people know about this podcast and encourage them to give it a listen because I truly believe in it. One thing I have to say to newcomers, coming from the negative reaches of the internet, to read this review is ignore the negative press about Ryback. God damn it, Taker. Fucking A. About the, uh, excuse me, ignore the negative press about Ryback and give him a chance by listening to the podcast. I guarantee that you will discover every bad thing that is said uh, are completely wrong and made to sabotage by painting a false negative picture. Their ending segments every week get better and better. Huge fan of the show, Aiden's Toyverse on Instagram. This review is not made to win anything from the big guy for the review of the week. It's intended to encourage people to give the show a chance. Ah, I like that. A guy that wants nothing in return for me. That sounds. And the winner is... <laughs> are, those the, are those the two choices for this week? That is the two I found, yes. What was the second one's name? Cruz... Uh, Cruz Rodriguez. Cruz... Cruz Driguez. Cruz, you're our winner this week uh, because you live in the States. <laughs> 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 I don't want to pay $70 for shipping to the UK. I just, that's the, that's crazy. It's, it's not, it, it's different for every place. It depends on the weight and the size, but it's, it's, it's pretty hefty, but that's what actually, uh, I'll talk about this in a second with Amazon UK, everything going on for the feed me more nutrition on that. But, uh, Cruz, you're the winner. Please take a snapshot, uh, of your review and send it to the big guy at feedmemore.com. Uh, with your supplement of choice from Feed Me More Nutrition, and we'll throw in a free Feed Me More Nutrition shaker bottle and workout towel uh, in that little combo for you as well. Um, Where actually I have my guy that helps me with the Amazon stuff, Anthony. Shout out to Anthony. He's uh, helped me tremendously throughout all this. I've actually learned to navigate Amazon now, and, and as far as not the site on shopping, but like the, the, <laughs> the seller account, as far as there's a lot that goes into it. And, uh, I've, I feel pretty caught up to speed on most things on there, but uh, he's helping me actually get the items up for the Amazon UK. Uh, Canada nice. is, we're still, I'm waiting on a, on a vendor invoice from the manufacturer, and I believe Canada might be a little tricky because Canada might require different labeling, which is, okay. which is I can't relabel anything of the current inventory, so that would have to be on in the future possibly we're waiting to get an answer on that but the uk we believe everything is cool the way that it is and we just got to get approved and uh get inventory sent over to everybody over in europe over there so it 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 is coming it's just we're dealing with amazon everything takes a little bit of time but he's actually uploading all those this week and uh i'm hoping to have everything within the next couple weeks running over in amazon uk so uh that would actually it, it would just it'd be nice so they have an option because shipping is really ridiculous over from them. Just international shipping sucks. There's no way around it. Okay. So, but yeah, you're our winner this week, Cruz. Thank you guys for the reviews. All right. Got a little tips of the week coming up. You got questions here too. 
Yeah, let's go ahead and hit me with some questions this week. Let's see what we got. All right, questions. First one is, I tore my ACL. This is from Mike White. On He has a couple of them. I tore my ACL. Should I ask for stem cell? Stem cell, excuse me. It's, um, I know in the States it is, it is being done at more and more places. Um, you got to find a place that, that does the, the fat cells and the bone marrow. I, I think that's the doctor here in Vegas that he primes it with the fat cells and then they do the bone marrow. The bone marrow is the, the good stuff. Um, it's definitely worth looking into, especially if your insurance covers it, uh, which some insurances do. It's, um, you, you'd be, you'd be it, it, with that stuff available, you, you would be ignorant not to look into it at least. Um, because it's some, if you could avoid surgery, if it's a full tear, you're going to need the surgery. But this, doing the stem okay. cells afterward, afterwards will, will speed up the, the healing process tremendously. Um, but if it's just partial tears, stem cells can fix a lot of that stuff. So uh, if you could avoid having to go under the knife, that, that's never a bad thing. So I definitely would look into it and, uh, and, and look within your community and see uh, what stem cell places uh, are around there. Okay. Uh, he also asked the question, Mayfield versus Buck, wrestling match, who would win and why? I don't know who Mayfield is. Did he mean Mayweather? I don't know. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Oh, I get it, because I'm a redhead. Okay. Kind of. Wait. So, I'm confused. I was trying to think. Maybe, maybe he meant to say Mayweather versus Buck, like, because I have the red beard, Connor-ish yeah, yeah. kind of thing going on. Oh. All Mayweather right. would beat your ass. Next question. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> shit. Wait, wait, wait. I get <laughs> fucked up pretty badly. <laughs> what kind of question is that? No. Uh, next question is, if I took two times the Feed Me More Nutritional Protein Powder, will I be two times bigger or will I get fat from the excess calories? That was a question? That was a real question. Oh, no, don't do that. Just take normal like, one to two scoops. There's no need to, you're not going to get twice as big taking four scoops of protein or anything like that. Um, follow the directions, please. From Dylan Hernandez, Seahawks187 on Twitter. Do you think Vince has unlimited energy in that Louie bag of his supplements? Does he take pre-workout? I don't know if he does or not. I posted a picture up on my Instagram of him with a water bottle. It looked like he had the pink lemonade flavor, wake up unlimited energy in there, but... um. <laughs> I don't know. I, I would think, judging by that picture, he definitely drinks something, whether they're amino acids or uh, pre-workout. I know he's big on the energy drinks. He does those. You know that um, ABB, they make those energy shots, like in like red lines and things hmm. like that, the different energy drinks? Yeah, 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 yeah. I like red line. But yeah, it, yeah. So it's not red line, but it's made by that bodybuilding supplement company, ABB. It's like the, it's yes. like their speed stack version in a smaller. He has those at TV. Like he has his like little protein powders where these plastic bottles, they're RTD protein powders, not made already though, where you just got to add water. So he has like these vanilla hmm. and chocolate ones, I believe. I've seen them then sitting in his office and in the, the production meeting room. And he has protein bars and these speed shot energy things, which you're only meant to have probably like one of those, maybe two a day. And I, I okay. just picture him drinking those all day long. Just, yeah, no, but he, he's notorious for drinking that kind of stuff. So I wouldn't be shocked if he had a little wake up unlimited energy in his bag. From Parker, Real Parker's Life on Twitter. I want your opinion on your former stablemate, Justin Gabriel's base jumping injuries. Yeah, no, it was very unfortunate. Uh, hopefully uh, he calms down on, on doing all that. He's a daredevil, though. He truly is, or a dare wolf, I should say. Um, yeah, he's always been a really good friend of mine and we all have that Nexus connection, all the, the original Nexus members and everything. But he, um, I'm hoping that's the last of his jumping days as far as that. And he can just focus on maybe wrestling and something else, but it's, uh, cause this shit can kill you. I mean, anything can kill you. It's just, it, it, you're putting yourself, that was a pretty bad incident. And, uh, I believe he's lucky to be alive from everything I've heard from it. He was actually just Jesus. texting me today. Uh, we text quite often, but, um, we don't really talk about that shit. Cause I don't really, I always just tell him, I go, you're fucking nuts, man. I don't, I, 
ocean and sky. I'm not. I like. I like being on land. And uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's unfortunate. Hopefully, he has a speedy recovery from his ankle injury. He, I believe, did he break both ankles? I don't know. All I do know is that I booked him September 9th, and I thought he was going to wrestle, but I'm going to have to talk to him and see what the deal is. The uh, uh, man, that's I don't I don't see that happening. I don't know what the timeline is on his um, recovery, but uh, I mean, we're in June right now. Doesn't look good. Yeah. When's your show? September 9th, which you're on that one as well. Put me and him in a match, just the crippled Nexus. Wade, who <laughs> hasn't wrestled us, all three of us, and we'll do an eight-man tag with you in the match with us as an honorary fourth <laughs> member of the Nexus since you always wanted to be in it. And then we all just stand <laughs> on the fucking apron and let you just get the shit beat out of you. But that, As long as I get an arm armband, I'm okay. Yeah, you just do it. Shine, heat, come back. Maybe I do a little something because I'll be the only one that's good to go. But just for fucking all of you can twist an arm, twist an arm, tag right yeah, back yeah. out. Gabriel, we got to do something with Gabriel where he could just kind of roll under the bottom rope and do something seated. <laughs> <laughs> just... <laughs> <laughs> He's talented enough to pull it off, but no, it sucks. And I, I hope I love Justin Gabriel. He's such a good human being. So everybody likes Gabriel. There's no one that nobody, sure, no, nobody great. hates him. He's such a good dude. A uh, question from Wrestling Fan for Life. Uh, my question is: Ripping off moves from wrestling guys of the '80s bad now? I say not. It's kind of cool to see it. Well, what, you're answering your own fucking question. This guy tweets us all day long, and he, he's he's got to pump the brakes a little bit. He's going to have to read he my book had, of the week that I, I plugged this week on my book of the week. This could help him tremendously. This, it automat. He he answered his own fucking question. So why is he asking it? God damn it! I mean, none of the guys from the '80s are around anymore doing those moves, and th- they got those moves from probably somebody else. And, and there's only so many things you could do in wrestling. There's like yeah. There's only so many ways you could pick up a guy and drop him. Um, and we could do a heart punch or a fucking yeah. You know, there's not. I, I, I nobody don't fully understand. Nobody it. invented wrestling as far as like in the, this generation of guys and it's um you got to kind of just do what you see on tape and try to make it make it your own and if there's a move that is not being done by anybody that you saw from somebody being done in the 80s why the fuck wouldn't you do it to try to stand out and be different the last thing anybody's worried about is man this guy who's writing us on twitter all day i really hope he's not mad that i'm doing this move from these guys in the 80s like none of us, <laughs> none of us fucking think we're just thinking, Oh, what can we do a cool move to stand out and fucking fill a little time to get through this fucking match? <laughs> Last question from Sean Molson, Molson, thirteen thirteen, intermittent fasting. Yes or no. Definitely not against it. I think if you do it, you gotta, it's not a bad idea to do some, uh, amino acids in there, whether they're the pills or the powder, the, the very low calorie powder, um, just to kind of keep your, muscles from breaking down and uh not bad at all it's uh but i would be very selective on on when you do that i'm constantly i i go i have to i feel like that for when i have these those the surgeries the procedures or anytime i've ever had surgery you got to stop eating usually at 12 midnight um and then where usually the surgeries in the morning i'm fine but i've had times where you get there and you're waiting for four or five six hours and your surgery gets pushed back to the afternoon. And it's like, I, I'm sitting there. I remember one time I was sitting there. It was like 2 in the afternoon, and I had stopped eating like 11 the night before. I thought I was fucking miserable. I just kept telling can you just give me drugs? Like, I just want to fucking go to sleep. It, it's, uh, I go crazy doing that for any long periods of time. But there's a lot of people that have a lot of success doing that as far as just giving your body a break and... uh I think you need. I think having amino acids in there is is a way to prevent muscle breakdown. Though during that, if you don't got any muscle, though, what the fuck are you you worried about? <laughs> I don't know if he does or not. I'm just saying. The last question is for both of us on the keto diet. How do you satisfy carb and sugar cravings? Well, if you listen to our advertisement, you would know Zevia is one great way. Uh, that is a legit thing. Uh, I've mentioned on the podcast also uh, pickles. Um, or another amazing way. I don't know if you're a big pickle fan, Buck. I am. Huge. The big gay Ryback loves pickles. He uh, <laughs> will go through jars at a time. Uh, oh, hell yeah! 
No, but uh, there's there's a little bit of soda. <laughs> Without using your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Bobbin for pickles. Uh, no, but pickles are, are, there's a little bit of sodium in pickles. But honestly, I never have to do more than one or two of them. Just, uh, and it kind of just, if I'm really, really hungry, that, that or salad, do it salads with a very, with a little bit of dressing. It will, uh, is a great way or celery. Celery is another, uh, great way with a, like a fat free ranch or, or something like that. Uh, just to get something to eat or broccoli is another thing. Those vegetable trays with greens, not carrots or anything with the higher sugars, but broccoli, uh, celery salads, it are great ways to fill your stomach with negative calories, essentially, that can help you get you through the night. Um, but also, in one of my tips, I'm giving a tip on the nutrition part tonight, on cravings. So uh, listen to our tips of the week this week, later on in the show. I have a bit of a sweet tooth, and while I'm on this, my go-to, because I'm a big, I love ice cream, can't eat it, obviously, on the keto What's diet. What's your favorite ice cream? Which I um, have probably, well... Gosh, if I had to buy it from the store, I like the Ben and Jerry's half baked. If, if you could only have that. one ice cream for the rest of your life, what would it be? It would be that the Ben and Jerry's half baked because it has a bunch of shit in it. But if it's just a straight Wait, flavor, half baked. I've never, I don't, I've never, oh, I've never a, even eaten Ben and Jerry's ever. Oh my god, it has like brownie and cookie dough and oh my god, that sounds amazing. You know, v- vanilla swirl. It, it's a real, it's a real treat. It's a, it's a. It's it's delicious. Have, have I good. been missing out on this? This is like yeah, you you got to go to the store, man, and get because uh, I'm a fan of not getting the big tub of ice cream. I get the little pints, but I'll eat the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I know if I know if I get the big you know briars or whatever, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna eat the whole thing of that. So I, I get the small kind of the artisanal you know ice creams with different things like that. I've always been a big mint chocolate. When I was a kid, I was a big mint chocolate chip fan. Uh, good I love Rocky Road though as well. And I love cookie dough ice cream. Uh, um, so this half baked is, it sounds very, very appealing to me. Check that out. Uh, speaking of, what would you say? Ryback Ry Ry gets a DUI after recording conversation with the big guy. <laughs> <laughs> Driving with a car with 10 fucking things of half baked. <laughs> <laughs> Eating ice cream all over his face. Mugshot has his ice cream. <laughs> all drunk. Just, I punch a cop because I'm mad they won't let me finish the fucking ice cream. <laughs> God damn. I'm kidding, everybody. I'm not going to get that tonight. And I'm never. I'm not going to punch a cop yeah, tonight. Not tonight. Maybe tomorrow. So, my thing is with this is uh, I go to Cool Whip because it's still low carb, low, you know, very, sugar. Yeah, and that's very good. Suggestion. I sprinkle. It, it tricks my brain into eating that frozen Cool Whip, obviously, and put a little bit of the PB2 on it. And I'm good to go. If I haven't reached my carb quota, because I've been going between, I'm roughly about 50 carbs a day now. Uh, I'll, I'll break a Quest bar in half and I'll microwave it. I'll put it in with a Cool Whip and I'll trick my brain like I'm eating a real, a real sweet treat. That's actually really cool. That's on those Quest bars. They, that, not all their flavors have the stevia. That's something actually down the mm-hmm. line I'm going to look into with Feed Me More Nutrition is doing um, some cool protein bars down the line. Once everything is kind of, I have some bigger projects doing. I want to get out first sure. for that, but it's uh, those are the protein cookies. I feel like they could be much improved, uh, but obviously, yeah, uh, that's something I'll have to look into. But you can actually heat up those Quest bars just for ten, twelve seconds. I think is like it doesn't need a lot. Yep, that's it. And it it makes them like a really soft, chewy texture that uh, it just makes them taste even better somehow. And I was always a big fan of the uh, strawberry cheesecake and the double chocolate chunk brownie. Um, that's the one I use. Yeah. It's, uh, Wade was the one that turned me on to those, I believe years ago. And I always used to have like a box in my, in my bag every week just for on the road for if food was tight or something. You can't find food and you just have a protein bar or two on the road. And those quest bars are fucking pretty good. Um, there's all sorts of tricks out there though, that you could do to help you, you know, curb your appetite and, and just, uh, get through the night. And because, I, I honestly now my cravings have gone down so much on this keto diet. I uh, mm-hmm. I was actually just looking today. I saw there was a thing an article on 2015 on like the top bodies in WWE, and I was I was on the list for that particular year. And they had they they, they had a section where they go room for improvements on, and they they broke down my diet because they'd heard on my interviews me talking about eating so much 
protein. And uh, it got me to thinking. I was like, man, I really do eat a lot of fucking protein. But I, I used to overeat, I think, when I did carbs. But I was so active that I had, yeah. I, like, to keep my body weight and to stay at that size, I had to consume a certain level of calories. And mm-hmm. I, But I, I could have done it with more carbs, I think, and cut down my protein a little. But I always wondered. I, I was like... Um, that's like doing this keto diet. I do often, I I'm trying, like I started off doing a lot higher fats on it and I've cut down my fats tremendously now on the, on like eating the fatty meats. Whereas like I was eating a whole thing of bacon every morning with eggs and sure. the fat content was so high on that. But I, now I go Turkey bacon and I do the eggs, uh, and I, I buy like the whole, whole hard boiled eggs. Um, and then I go lean meats throughout the rest of the day, and I get my fats from like coconut oil and macadamia nut oil because those are those mm-hmm. are heart healthy friendly fats. Where I'm not eating as many saturated fats, uh, I'm trying to be just conscious of that a little bit more um, as I'm getting a little older in life and whatnot. Even though I'm still a very young, beautiful 35, I still <laughs> I, I just I'm looking I'm looking at the big picture. So okay. That is all my questions for the week. All right. Wrap that up. Why don't we go ahead? We'll go into some tips of the week, and uh, we'll take another break after this, and uh, we'll, we'll finish off strong with our, with our main event of the night with the, with the new WWE. Blah, 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 botch. <laughs> with, with the new WWE uh, network shows. But tips of the week, guys. Tips of the week. Yay. All right, book of the week this week, The 10-Minute Digital Declutter, 10-Minute Digital Declutter by S.J. Scott, The Simple Habit to Eliminate Technology Overload, um, which is a really cool book that I, I got from another book by this author called Declutter Your Mind or Declutter the Mind, and it's essentially just with everything with social media and technology uh, as you look at your phone right now as I'm talking, it's just, <laughs> just ignoring me. That's uh, no, but it, it essentially kind of breaks down um, how how technology is taking over our lives and simple little tricks on on, on putting your phone away for for little bits of times, um, not going to bed with your phone and whatnot. It, it kind of it has some pretty cool things in there. I think you could definitely get something out of it. I think everybody living in this day and age should uh, read books on this on this subject matter just to. Phones are great. The technology is great. They add to our lives greatly, um, but we should never become slaves to our phones. So it's uh, right. that's kind of what that deals with on that. Quote of the week. Strength does not come from winning. Your struggles develop your strengths. When you go through hardships and decide not to surrender, that is strength. And that is uh, from Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhi. All right. All right. Nutrition tip of the week. This, this deals with the cravings a little bit there. If you're constantly hungry... Increase your fiber intake and look to eat foods with a higher fiber intake. Adding in more fiber later in the day can help decrease late night cravings, which is, which we talked about. I just actually ordered some more off of Amazon that, uh, colon cleanse sweetened with stevia. It's, uh, Me I too, do two yeah. scoops every day, man. It's, uh, and this actually, so it's okay to take it before bed. I take it first thing in the morning. I should, I take I deal with cravings in the middle of the night. I do. And I normally drink a shake in the middle of the night. Should I just take fiber and fill up? Yeah. What would you I do would for do, that? If you, you can still do your shake later. Do your shake. Do fiber before it. Okay. It will. I, would, I do it every night before bed. So that way, essentially, when I wake up, like it, I'm just, it eliminates everything from the day that you haven't gotten rid of already while you're sleeping. And you get up. Usually when you wake up or when you eat that first meal, you'll kind of get on a regular schedule. I, that's just what I, mm-hmm. I prefer on that. But it, 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 man, it is, it is some good stuff. And it really, and just, you can get fiber from so many different foods and eating like vegetables, broccoli, greens, you're going to, you're getting more fiber with those. It, that's why we kind of suggested that before. Uh, but, but I think adding that in will definitely help. I was going to tell you, I had my, that, that the procedure this week, the worst part of the procedure. And when you have surgery, is they typically give you things that constipate you for a few days, and really? yeah, oh yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they and they they this is every time I've had the stem cells done, they give me an injection in the IV in the 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 needle they have in my hand, where in the guy they he comes in about an hour before the procedure, and uh, 
I forget the name of the, I should have, I had him tell me the name and I forgot it, but it dries out your mouth where essentially hmm. when you, they put you under, you're not like salivating too much. Yeah. But yeah. It takes today's like the first day I feel back to normal. My mouth was dry for the last two days. Just, hmm. you can't, I mean, you drink a whole thing of water, your mouth is dry. Go to bed, wake up my mouth. It, that's like the worst part about it. But, um, that reminded me of that. Because I was the fiber, though, because of usually the complications after surgery, it takes like two to three days to normalize after surgery. But uh, yeah, add in more fiber will definitely not hurt you. Okay. One more tip here, fitness workout tip of the week. Wear proper footwear when squatting, deadlifting, or performing other heavy load-bearing lifts. Wearing the wrong shoes can decrease performance. It's essentially wasted energy. And what I mean by that is uh, I'm a big fan of the Nike Air Maxes which are the, the shoes with the have the air in them. Uh, and I've actually okay. used to lift in them as far as like doing my squats. And I remember one time I was squatting at home and <laughs> I don't remember the exact amount I had on there, but my shoes popped because I had too much weight and the shoes couldn't really? add. And my one, it was like oh. my right shoe popped and my right foot fucking caved down. And I caught the weight though before I, I luckily I was at the top of the lift and I didn't, I wasn't mm-hmm. like mid fucking squat or anything like that. So they have shoes for powerlifting and squatting with flat soles that if you're doing heavy deadlifts or squats, leg press, anything where you're doing anything with heavy weight bearing loads on you, get, wear shoes with no soles essentially or very thin soles. Because when you wear like these shoes with the thick, the thick, th- thick tholes, uh, <laughs> the thick soles, uh, you want to make sure sh- they can waste energy because when you're doing power lifting or, or heavy deadlifts and squats, if you're having given your shoes, it's essentially taken away from the lift. Um, at the same time, hmm. when you're doing athletic things like running, CrossFit training, you know, um, things of that nature, box jumps, jump rope, you want to wear the, the shoes with the, with the, the running shoes, the CrossFit shoes. So just it kind of use that to, Whatever training you're doing, make sure you have proper footwear because it definitely, it definitely can make or break you. And that's it for tips right. of the week. Yay! Let's take a little break, and we'll be back with uh, the network shows that we want to see that'll help boost the old ratings and subscription counts. We'll be right back. Do you suffer from erectile dysfunction, low sex drive, or limp noodle syndrome? Have you been experiencing a lack of morning wood, depression, down on your luck, hidden turtle syndrome, or the desire to lust after beautiful, drop-dead gorgeous, my God, look at her kind of women? Have you spent countless hours in the gym with little to no results? If you suffer from one or more of these symptoms, then you may suffer from low testosterone. Rather than going to a doctor for hormone replacement therapy and having him probably judge you, or even worse, getting a female doctor. Why not just try the big guy, all natural testosterone booster? It's been blood tests proven to naturally raise testosterone levels by over 300 points. So what does that mean in medical terms? Boners, lots of boners. So what are you waiting for? Get your boner now with the big guy. Available on Amazon and feedmemore.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and fucking marks of all ages. It's time for the main event of tonight's show. New WWE Network shows. They're always trying to figure out new ways to entertain you fans and not pay the talent. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, let's. Uh, so with that being said, me and uh, Pat Buck have picked... Is it our top? I got eight choices. Do you have around eight? I have around eight. I may have may have seven. We'll see. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll put up on the conversation with the big guy, Twitter, CWTBG, uh, Twitter account this week. We'll take two of our top picks um, and uh, for four total because it only allows four for the poll. And we'll put that up and we'll let you guys vote and, uh, and see what you like best for a new WWE Network show moving forward. So that right. said, Buck, you want to go ahead and start this bad boy off, or you want? <clears throat> if I have one extra choice, maybe I should, uh, maybe I should kick this bad boy off. Yeah, go ahead, go for it. All right, I have many different types of shows on here. My first show, though, um, 
is a show where essentially they've taken like the car rides with the ride along and, and yeah. taken that part of the business and, and told two guys, well, we need you to, we need you to ride together tonight so we could record you and fake a, <laughs> and film a fake conversation or just pretend you like each other and, and talk for the show's sake. Um, <laughs> So this is, though, something I actually, um, what we would do occasionally on the road where guys got the same hotels, um, not the TV hotels at all. The fans hang outside waiting for an autograph from when you're just trying to go to bed at 3 in the morning. But the, the hotels that you book through Hotwire or Priceline, and you guys all pick the same one, this is called WWE Hotel Hangout. And okay. it's much like Table for Three, but it's not just limited to just three people. It could be four, five, six. It could be a whole party for that matter, in which usually alcohol is involved uh, in a kind of a free spirit hangout with the guys, just kicking back, relaxing, usually probably on a live event night or after a TV when yeah. the guys all stay up for the next flight to fly out in the morning. And uh, we've done it before. I, I have fond memories of uh, hanging out. I actually just posted a picture up on my Instagram today. I sent it to you. Uh, one of my buddies sent me uh, on the European tour. It was uh, Usos were on there, Roman was on there, and uh, quite a few other people. And uh, we had to finish the beers on the bus. We had a rule that we had to finish the beers before we got to the next town. Okay. And we had we had a lot of beers that night. And <laughs> if you look, I am beyond fucked up in this picture, and I'm flexing. I don't have any recollection of any of this. Flexing like an asshole. Um, holding the big bag of beers empty with Roman, like in the background. And we were all, I funny story on this. I get to this hotel, which I remember it. Fuck. It was in where's um, Mason Ryan from that. He always Wales, Wales. Yeah. We, we, uh, we were near Wales. Um, and we always stayed in the same hotel. And I remember, you know, when you get so drunk where, you know, like that picture was taken right when I probably lost memory. Like I don't, I, <laughs> okay. You're, you're browning out. You didn't black out yet though. I hadn't blacked out, but it was, Bra- it was, it was coming. So yeah, and, brown out. You're in a brown yeah, out. You're aware, I, but you're, you're, you're almost there. Yeah. Almost there. I get to the hotel. I get my, cause when you get to these hotels on the European tours, they give you the hotel key. They have them ready for you in an envelope. When mm-hmm. you walk in, they gave me my keys I get to the elevator. I go up to, like, usually they have catering. I didn't even go to catering. I was so fucked up. I just tried to get to my room because I knew I was fucking going. <laughs> I get to my room. My keys don't work in the door. So, like, I'm, I have to piss fucking like a horse. I'm, at any minute, I'm going to fall on my face, and I know okay. it. Okay. I have to go back with my bags. I can't leave my bags in a hall. Don't yeah, go back yeah. to the front. They fucking <clears throat> give me a new set of keys. I get back to the room. The keys don't work again. I, Fuck. this time I'm not even angry. I'm just terrified. I'm going to fall on my face and like <laughs> Ryback fucking, you know what I mean? Just yeah, some yeah, yeah. horrible story comes out and, uh, I get back again. I go, I need you guys to let me in. And they made sure they walked up with me. Um, because they probably realized how drunk I was also and mm-hmm. thought I was doing something wrong, but they redid the keys. They finally got me in my room. I kid you not. The moment I got in my room, didn't even move my bags. I just wheeled in, let the door shut, fell on the bed. I almost missed the bus the next day because we had an early show and I didn't know we had an early show. And I woke up and I, I was like, oh, I'll order room service, go to the gym. And then I saw the itinerary sitting there. Holy shit, I got to be in the bus. And like mm-hmm. I had to hurry and get ready and then go out there and go wrestle hungover. And it, man, hell of a night. But um, <laughs> hotel hangout, I think, is a good opportunity to get, get a camera crew on the road. You get some of the guys, you let them kick back a few, have a good time and just share stories and talk about whatever and ruin their night for the evening and not pay them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like that idea. And, and some of these ideas, some of mine are kind of fun, kind of good. I think interesting. And some are fucking pretty evil. And I'm sure yours I, are probably the I'm same the thing. same way. Probably. Yeah. All right. My, uh, one of my picks or one of my shows is going to call dark sunshine. So, uh, all it is, is it is, uh, a collection of dark matches. So across the years, everything that airs on this show is about all the interesting different dark matches. Dark sunshine. Dark sunshine, because these matches will never see the light of day. So just think about all these interesting, like really good and terrible dark matches that they've had. They have so much footage of dark matches. That people have never seen. 
and would love to see. So Dark Sunshine is uh, is, is no commentary either, just the raw footage. I wouldn't um, mind Jim Ross since he's under contract again doing commentary on the dark matches. <laughs> these, these poor dark, there's many people that have done dark matches that never have gotten commentary on these matches. Mm-hmm. You know, let's bring in JR and maybe, maybe Nigel McGinnis and let's yeah. give them a fair shake at getting a fucking solid commentary for these short four to six minute dark matches that never would have it. That Holy some, shit. Some dreams were crushed in these dark matches. But yeah, Dark Sunshine is my pick. I love the name already, Dark Sunshine. <laughs> I don't know why. I holy fuck, that's that's a good one, Buck. All right, my next show is kind of a comedy one a little bit, but WWE Blind Date. I would like to see uh, okay. WWE superstars since they're always on the road, and you know, social media dating apps are a big thing, and maybe they make accounts for some of the guys that are single and uh, and, and try to get them to uh, find find love on the road. And uh, where they film these dates, these blind dates of these WWE superstars in random weird towns like maybe Parma, Ohio, or just in the middle of nowhere. Not, not that Parma's a weird town because someone will fucking Wait, message so me. Wait, so the superstars go on blind dates with who? Regu- with regular people. Regular fans? Yeah. Or, okay. no, not, no, well, preferably not fans. <laughs> would, like just maybe someone, a girl or a guy that doesn't know what they do. Gotcha. And, uh, but WWE blind date, it would have to be set up in a, you know, a blind date format, essentially, where, you know, they, they tell the people, you know, you're going to be going on a date with this, this person and blah, blah, blah. And then you kind of, you just, you just film it and record it and you see what you get with it. Some shit sticks, some doesn't, but you got the guys on the road, you know, give them a free meal and put them on a date with a hot chick. You know, no one's going to complain. All right. Blind date. Here's my uh, next one. And this one I have a little bit of a tough time with because I, I don't know how to put it. Uh, where the bodies are buried, the Tony Gurria story. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Tony Gurria, uh. outsiders may not know, but he's, he was employed for over 30 years with the company. Hell of a run. Hell of a run. And it was kind of obvious you weren't, ever really necessarily sure what he did, but you know there's a backstory to it, and you know there's a reason why he came from Vince Sr. and was protected all throughout Vince Jr. He retired when he wanted to retire. 30-something years with WWE. Was that the WWE. case he retired when he wanted to? I would think so, and I think that happens to a lot of to a couple people, And the, but, but the show explores these people that have long careers, but then we... we, we uh, granted, this would never happen, but... I just like the name of the show, Where the Bodies Are Buried. These people that know these inner secrets. I love that it's them, but they, they shadow their face, but you could clearly hear <laughs> yes. their voice. And yes. we know it. That's fucking Tony Gria talking. It, <laughs> it, it, then like Brooklyn Brawlers, but you clearly know it's and then blah, 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 blah. Like, you just fucking know it's the guy. But they try to shadow their face to fucking. And all fuck, the stories, their are they're reenactments, like shitty, like, you know, like uh I know exactly what you're talking like those shows that go back on like the crime scene things and then reenact yes. like with other actors on uh I know I can't remember the one of the shows you're I talking about. I can't remember about. either. Fuck. I God love like a I love though if they use they shadow their face for that, but they use those actual guys for the reenactments <laughs> and they don't shadow their faces. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, this I is fun. You, you have two home runs right there. Uh, I just love the where the bodies are buried. The Tony Gurria story. <laughs> it's just a network special. <laughs> Highest rated thing. I would I would watch that in a heartbeat. <laughs> oh man, oh, Buck, you're 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 putting out some good shows right now. You came up with this idea. I said this is a great idea, and I immediately sat down and started just thinking of shit and. Um, so I'm scared though. I might've set the bar too high. I'm trying to build up a little bit. Yeah. All right. This show, I think I've mentioned this before on the past, so I'm going to knock this one out early. WWE making the magic. We've exposed the business all the way though already with uh, other WWE network 24 specials and showing behind the scenes and, and whatnot and, and through the tough enough stuff over the years. 
WWE making the magic is your favorite heel and babyface sitting down to put together their match for a Monday Night Raw, SmackDown, wow, or okay. pay per view, where you actually get to see the two people that are actually in a current storyline, watching them how they put together their matches, which I think would be fucking hilarious because it's it's just no, you know, what, yeah, I, I like it, I like it a lot. It's just Samoa Joe pitching to Brock and like no, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that would make for uh, an interesting uh, we've already exposed it I'm sure that's just one of the they're dying to see that part of the fucking you know part of the show that's a alright I like that mine is kind of up that alley but not really more not a not a funny show but I think it would be interesting I just call it Destination it's not humorous so uh the WWE Network, apparently, they're unhappy with the views on certain shows. This is kind of the reason why we have this topic, too. Like, they're not happy with 205 Live, apparently, because, I mean, really? the guys have been... Apparently, it doesn't do that well on the network. And they've, they've been adding divas to it, to hoping it helps boost views, which I don't know if that's going to happen, but... Uh, Wait, you know, what do you mean divas to it? They've associated, like, Alicia Fox on, like... She's involved in, like, storylines on 205 Live, and, like, it looks like they're moving over a couple other women there just to kind okay. of help to wrestle the, guys. the guys. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so Sell the they, same weight. So the, the idea I have is if, and this might be a bad That's idea. That's a joke, know. guys. The girls are not as heavy as the guys on the show. Oh, well, some are, uh, no, let's say <laughs> some are a lot more heavier. <laughs> Fuck. It is. It's come on, man. It's true. A couple of them walk out. I'm like, how the f- what the fuck? <laughs> uh, yeah. So here's the idea. Uh, um, it's called Destination. So it's, you could take the cast of 205 Live or what, anything. You announce a whole pay-per-view six months down the road. And you announce what the matches are going to be. And now you start from the beginning with a completely, like, the, the, paper, the show starts off with, you already know the guys. The, pay, the destination thing is six months later, you already announce it before the season begins or whatever they start filming. And it could be guys from NXT that aren't on the show yet. It could be guys from the main roster. You're trying to figure out how do they get to this destination. So okay. you basically, you know, one of the matches could be, I don't know, could be Neville versus Roderick Strong. But you know that's going to be the end game and you have to watch the season and figure out well, how the fuck do they get there? Roderick Strong is not even on the show yet. Or it's this person, you know, that started off as a tag team, and then it's, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, you know what the end result is, and now you're watching the show to see, trying to guess on how they get there. It's kind of inside the box, and I think would be more for smarter fans, but that's the whole network, I feel like. That's who Uh, they cater to now, which is why everything is down, because they don't cater to the casual viewer anymore. so. So it's kind of just a different way of hey, let's just fucking try this out rather than try to do the same type of presentation that we do for every show every single time. Yeah, I like that. That's, uh, that's not a bad idea at all. You have some really good ideas. The Gria one's my favorite so far. <laughs> <laughs> my next show is, uh, this is another, um, this, I think, again, I've mentioned this on the podcast before, so I want to mention it early before I, I get into some of my other ones. Um, WWE in the Showers. Where uh, <laughs> cameras are set up strategically not to show dicks. Um, again, it'd be hard with the, with the women we could blur out, or we have blur out bl- the blurs in there. But you get to see your favorite baby faces and heels showering uh, after a hard match um, in, in mid conversation. Uh, you know, pass me the soap, bro, uh, or anything of that <laughs> nature. Um, oops, I dropped the soap uh, if we're dealing with Big Gay Ryback. Um, <laughs> But it's you see your your current favorite superstars in a in a very um, humbling position, um, and and just get to see them in, in a whole different you know light, so to speak. WWE showers. <laughs> We've Jesus invaded Christ. all the superstars' privacy already in every other show, venture. Show so why not? Let's just fuck it. Here they are, and they're all their glory. All right, my next one. I have a feeling you're gonna have a similar one. Uh, 405 Live. <laughs> I almost just choked on my drink. So, just to go back on this, 
I when you were talking about destination, yeah, I completely in my head was playing out a whole other that that's so funny. I don't have that on my sheet. Okay, um, when I was just picturing who you were talking about and picturing the the name of the show for. 405 410 live in my head. Really? I swear to God. And I missed I missed the whole I'm gonna have to listen to the show next week to hear wow. what destination is about because I missed a big chunk of it. <laughs> I was totally zoned out. And then I in my head I was thinking though, but she's still kind of hot. And like it's just go. Sorry. 405 Live, same concept as 205 Live, but every wrestler is over 405 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> If they want to start this off, just like we had the Cruiserweight Classic last summer, maybe the Overweight Classic, a little tournament. Every guy has to be over 405 pounds. Or just old retired wrestlers, just like uh, like that old battle gimmick, Battle Royal they did that one year. It's just everyone yeah, passed their prime. You just wrestlers pass their prime that are still going. <laughs> 55 Live, yeah, something yeah, like that. 55 Live. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Flair Hogan again, everything just... Fucking film. Oh, my God. I would like to see it filmed before Raw or SmackDown so the crowd's a little hotter. Yeah. Um, give them. They deserve it. They deserve to have a hotter crowd for that. And big plus, too, you're building up the show because they're not going to do as much at this point. Mm-hmm. And then that way the show builds as it goes along. Not a bad idea. 405 Live. All right. 405 or 55 <laughs> Live. I'm okay with either one. <laughs> either one of those. <clears throat> All right. This next show... Is a show. I think. I think there's this one has legs, and maybe not in this light, but I think this could trigger an idea uh, with somebody there. WWE producer spotlight. Um, essentially, the the past superstars, guys like Arn Anderson, Michael Hayes, Mike Rotundo, um, all the agents, Finn mm-hmm. Finley. There, there's so many um, where we essentially you do a producer spotlight where you maybe. You highlight, you pick a the you know the the producer spotlight. Art Anderson is is the talent for this week, and you you show his highlights of his career, and you have interviews with current talent, and it's just a network special, and you have them interacting and him giving throughout the day, him talking to talents and and just how figured in they are on on building the future of today. Um, and I think that'd be a good way because they're very. These guys play a huge role in a lot of the guys' careers sure. at different points. Pat Patterson is another mm-hmm. one who's had pivotal, you know, key moments with guys and has been notorious for having key breakout moments with certain talents and maybe uh, highlighting some of these producers a little bit, to, okay. and whether they want that or not, but it was just an idea. Granted, I would hope they get paid for it but because, uh, you know, they're not the talent. So, Cool. I got two left. How many do you have left? <clears throat> Let's see. Producer spotlight. I have one, two. I have three left. Three left. Okay. Would you like me to go ahead and do another choice? Yeah, let's let's equal out the playing field. All right. My next choice is WWE Lifestyles. Uh, essentially, again, this is kind of a, of a spin of the rich and famous okay. uh, with Robin Leach. And uh, this is inside the homes of your favorite WWE superstars and divas, not the ones living in apartments right now that are not making any money, but the ones that have done well for themselves and like uh, in, broken out, so to speak. Sure. Because uh, a lot of them have some pretty cool homes and whatnot, and you could kind of feature them. Their rides and their cars, and we've seen a little bit of Cena's home, but it would kind of be, an, again, another an insight into the talent. Um, which we might not like, some might like, I don't know. Um, but just a different aspect of seeing them in a different light. Okay. You can see the home Roman Reigns is living in and hate him even more. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> and why he doesn't give a fuck. My next one, a little hard of a concept, but you're going to have to follow it with me. It's called Fighting for Andre. So. Okay. The end game is the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, which, you know, is always a, Kind of a pivotal moment now with, uh, with, dare I say, with WrestleMania. So basically what you do is this. You start at the Royal Rumble, right? And you let five, go, five guys know that they're going to be in it that night. Like, look, like, you know, you don't have a whole lot of things going on, but you're definitely going to be in the, in the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. You can mix it up, maybe put a couple guys from NXT. And you're going to document them uh, going week by week or, or every now and then. It doesn't really have to be week by week. 
but it's it's a, it's a series. So basically about how winning the Andre the Giant Battle Royal would be the, the most pivotal thing in their career. And what you do is you, you, you get all their stories, you get these guys over. But here's the twist. On the night of WrestleMania, uh, you figure out a way. Now, I don't know how to do this because everybody talks in wrestling. But you got to figure out a way to tell each one of when these guys. When you say everybody guys, talks, in wrestling, or you, talks in wrestling, are you talking about Conrad always talks to the, the telegram, uh, telephone, tele- tele-wrestler. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's I mean, more thing. Here, here's the big hook. This is what I mean by this. You got to tell these five guys each individually in a convincing way from different people that they're all going to win this battle royal. And then they, they all go to the ring and you figure out how to get everyone else out. But these five guys and they all have to really fight to win this battle royal. Wow. And that's and the audience is clued. And we film this. We don't let let it out. But what a clusterfuck that would be. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, I'm supposed to go over. No, I'm supposed to go over. Then then. This would be the, 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 you would have to piggyback this with telling guys they would not be allowed to talk about the match. Yeah. You would have to be, that would have to be a requirement. You would have to keep the talent separated. You'd have to give them a late call time to get to the building very late so that way nobody could talk. Okay. That, that's a tough one to pull off, though. It's funny. It seems like it's really tough. Yeah. All right. I like it, though. These, again, some comedy, some not comedy, some real, some maybe not real, but you, maybe they, they spark an idea. Somebody, in, you know, we don't get paid anything for it. Um, <laughs> That's the most important that thing. As long as talent is not paid, it's good to go. That's, that's the only thing I, you know, care about. Um, my next show is WWE One Versus All, and this is kind of a – it's a situation that you can – let me explain it first. It's okay. a WWE superstar answering fan questions from a podium. Just a room filled with fucking marks grilling your favorite <laughs> superstar or diva. Filmed at WWE live events. So, like, this, this show could be done logistically because we do, you know, when you're with the WWE, you do these meet and greets before the show with people that pay for the live meet and greets. They could, they could piggyback this. With fans or do, or because they have these big rooms at the live events where yeah, where you could get you can look for certain talents where you say we're filming an episode of WWE One versus All with Roman Reigns. We want we want all Roman Reigns haters to you know a room of a hundred people that fucking hate this guy's guts. Wow! And where it's him at a podium and them sitting and you just put a camera in there and you let him go back and forth. I fucking and have, love it. You have uh, you have maybe the WWE security in there for if one of the fans is fucking, you know, does something stupid and just froggy. Fucking, yeah. yeah, and you let the talent just be able to speak their mind, get over on these guys and fucking I think it just and just vent. It's just for the talent to vent. And you like and just like just go off on these fucking marks. And I think it just <laughs> creates for great television. I love it. Love that a lot. Like, not a, not a lot of people would show up in the, for these things because they they don't all have pictures on social media and whatnot, and it's it. But it would it's essentially taking the social media game and making them accountable. Which yeah. fucking marks have the balls to go in the room for one versus all? Fuck. All right, I love it. My last one's really evil, man. Um, I can't wait not. to hear this. All right, so the name of the show the name of the show is it's called Welcome Back, and uh, so. You've heard this from time to time. People that leave WWE, uh, most of them not on their own accord, are they're waiting for that phone call back. You By know, the way, they, everybody, I, for everyone out there, I wasn't fired. I'd like to clarify this again. There's still people out there that <laughs> believe that you. I was fired. <laughs> I fucking left on my own. I got up, I walked out of St. Louis, and I said, "Fuck this, I'm going home." It was that's all there is to it. I get but, messages on that still. Go, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. It's okay. So for most, for most though, they are released. And I've met over, God, for many years, people that think, I mean, older guys, and this, it's more funnier, if, we'll get to this evilness, if it's someone kind of from an older generation waiting, that they're waiting for that phone call back. So what happens is, is uh, you have to find someone, WWE will seek this person out, someone that's not in wrestling anymore. However, uh, like someone that's out of wrestling, but I'm not, and I'm not saying that they're not down on their luck, but they're not in that great of physical shape, but they want to be back for some reason. So now, uh, they get the phone call from, and it has to be from Vince himself. 
<laughs> Does that, that happen anymore? No, probably not. But this whole idea, it has to be sold in a realistic way. Like, look, like we know you're not maybe involved, but you know, we have this kind of idea for a character and, and you could, you could really play this part well. And if you, uh, you know, go through the protocol, you know, maybe there's an opportunity, maybe there's not, but, but, but your name is in the running. You gotta, gotta kind of loosely sell this idea. Um, and basically this person will go back to, will go to NXT. They'll actually, you know, train a little bit, but they, they're, they're taken care of and they're document this whole, this person gets back into shape and gets back into, they work you know, with them to get them back into shape. Yeah. yeah. They've done po- it many times with guys. So. And it's, and it's from someone that you wouldn't really normally expect. However, everyone's in on it, and everyone believes this is, this is like, wow, this is a thing. You know, what, they have this character in mind. This, um, I already, this is fucked up. So, you know, maybe even a couple cat matches, n- matches or whatever, but, or even part of tag team matches. I don't know. We get this person relatively good enough that they go to Raw. They have a big writers meeting with, you know, the writers and, and, or the agents and, you know, they're talking about this thing and they say, you know, tonight's the night you're going to debut. This character is legit. And they're about to go through that curtain and Vince just tells them it's all a big fucking joke. Jesus and Christ. It's pretty devastating. <laughs> Ow. Gotcha. <laughs> but Man. the person, the person gets $250,000 as a parting gift, but they don't it, get it, to it, debut. It's all That's, filmed and back. It's all filmed for the network. Yes. Oh, man. Welcome back. What a horrible <laughs> fucking... I mean, that, that, I, gr- great entertainment, but man, you really, really just ruined it. You got to give them a good amount of money. I think they would probably... Honestly, I think most would probably be okay with it as long as they got that payday. Yeah, so you break their heart, and then later on it's like, but we're going to give you $250,000 for being a good sport, but you'll never be on WWE again, and that's it. That's where the show Jesus ends. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> just... <laughs> I'm just picturing legends in my head going through this. Like ready to all eager to debut. And it's like, nope, this is where this is where it stops. The best is, is this happens to me. They agree. <laughs> we, we'll let you keep everything. We agree on a great money deal. We come in. We're going to put the title on you. Blah, 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 blah. And come in and it's just fucking your idea. And then I, <laughs> I fly straight from there to you and I kill you. <laughs> or we just talk about it on the podcast. Talk Keep about it, it on the podcast, yeah. No, that's uh that's fucking funny. My my last show is a show that I think is something that is 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 money waiting to be made. That uh there's been people on, on YouTube that have capitalized on it, but it's such a big part of wrestling. And it's and again the business has been exposed by within from within. Great. And just with everything going on in social media, it's just a different day and age, right? But this show is WWE botched. And this is the biggest botches of all time. <laughs> hosted by the big guy, Rybotch. <laughs> which I've notoriously gotten messages from fucking shitty fans, fucking marks over the years, calling me Rybotch, which mo- most have been blocked. It's uh, very few and far between now. But uh, it's, a, it's a show on the WWE Network where we feature just 30 minutes of the fucking greatest botches for the week. And because uh, there's, there's plenty of them to live on forever. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, hosted by the big guy Rybotch. I like because it. Because I, I apparently botch all the time, which was, <laughs> uh, always makes me laugh. So um, I, that is my one idea. It doesn't have to be hosted by me. That was a joke. But the show is a real show. Um, WWE botched, and that was my my number one pick for the week. That's great. I actually thought you would have put one more in there that we talked about in the past. What was the, that? I I, the, I the felt like I was forgetting. Uh, series total big guys. Ah, fuck! I forgot all about that. I I'm sitting here, and I was I started this the other day, and I I feel like I'm forgetting something. And then Hotel Hangout came to me, but total big guys. That's another fuck. That was always a joke. I felt like. Me, Big E, Mason Rusev, Ryan, Mason Ryan when he was there, but but uh, those me, Big E, uh, <laughs> Rusev, and and, uh, and Mason Ryan would have been a great total big guys, just four <laughs> big guys living life going around. Fuck, what a great that! I'm glad we got that on, got up that on the list. It's uh, there's money to be made with that, and just you know, rather than just featuring the fucking divas all the time, you feature the guys and what they go through being big. 
you know? Just eating protein. <laughs> Just, it's all just repetitive shit. Like week three, he's just fucking banging their head on the wall. These guys just do the same shit every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ah, what a what a show! But we're gonna take our top two picks. We'll bo- we'll both pick what we like as our two uh, top picks. Or should we do it here on the show so they kind of know what they can uh, have in store for voting, Buck? Let's do on the show. If I had to pick yours, I'd pick... I love the podium idea, whatever that was called. The, WWE uh, one versus all. That's my pick. I fucking love that. And I guess I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with botch, too. I'm going to go... Those are my top two. I love the podium okay. thing the, fir- the best. The That's my favorite. Okay. Um, I think uh, the Tony Gurria <laughs> show... <laughs> where the is, bodies uh, are buried. Where the Tony- what was your first one that you mentioned again? Uh, the first one was, let me, fuck, uh, Dark Sunshine. Dark Sunshine is the other wow. one. The top, your first two were my top two from you. That's funny. I, I, cause I think Dark Sunshine has legs as a real show. Um, so I, I think if, uh, if we could figure out a way to, I could do multiple polls on there, but, um, and, and maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll do a different one every day, even if that's, yeah. uh. And we'll try to get them all, and then we'll take the winners and put them up for the final day and try to get the fans to find. Because I feel like all these choices, while we'll pick, we like certain ones, WWE in the showers might be in high demand. (laughs) It might be. I didn't think Big Gay Ryback was going to crush it. I didn't think it was going to crush it. Yeah, it killed it in the polls. People overwhelmingly with 50-something percent of the the poll. I thought Homeless Ryback was a shoe-in for at least the number two. That that was uh, number three. Big Big Daddy Ryback was number two. Homeless Ryback was number three. Rye Boo was number four. <laughs> I feel like not everyone understood what Rye Boo was if they didn't listen to the podcast. So, Of course. But yeah, that's it for me this week, though. And uh, you got anything else you'd like to say, Buck? That's all. Excuse you, me. You want <laughs> Sorry. people to follow? <laughs> no, are you, you follow me. Are you, are, you, are you drinking tequila again, Pat? No, no, no. I'm, I'm only two, uh, <laughs> two Tito's in. All right. You can follow me on all platforms. I am Buck Never Stops. And I am at Ryback22 on Twitter, the big guy, Ryback22 on Instagram, Ryback247 on Snapchat. Follow the official conversation with the big guy at CWTBG on Twitter. Thank you guys very much. You've just listened to another episode of Conversation with the Big Guy. It's the Labor Day sale at Ace. Now through Monday only, buy two gallons of our top paint brands, Valspar, Clark & Kensington, and Royal, and get the third gallon free. And with the Ace Extra Mile promise, if it ever takes more than one trip to complete your paint project, we'll bring you what you need and deliveries free. Don't miss the buy two, get one free paint sale only at Ace.